values the development of strong relationships with the families we serve. If you have a desire to help children succeed and thrive in a positive and supportive work environment, apply on our website, fullcirclepediatric.com. Finally, beautiful weather is here, and so is a summer of fun. That means more time in your car. Make sure your vehicle is ready at one of the three locally owned Jiffy Lubes of Fargo. Oil changes are the number one maintenance item that's neglected. At Jiffy Lube of Fargo, it's easy. No appointment needed. Just drive up and drive in for your signature service oil change. Plus a check on the priority items to make sure your vehicle is working hard and can get you everywhere you want to go this summer. Jiffy Lube of Fargo has proudly served the Fargo-Moorhead Metro for over five decades. Jiffy Lube of Fargo, where you can do more in a Jiffy. This is for the men who never settle. The ones who believe only quitters and a game and a tie. The type of guys who choose the bar with the biggest TVs to overcompensate for theirs at home. This is the Lodge mentality. This is Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks just added a new dish to their menus, the Chicken Street Corn Salad. The new addition features iceberg lettuce, charred corn, lentils, billionaire's bacon, roasted jalapenos, parmesan pico de gallo, green onions, cilantro, tortilla strips, creamy lime vinaigrette, and chili lime salt. The construction is almost done at the Gateway Clearance Center, and the construction sale is going strong. No negotiations necessary, and payments starting as low as $99 a month. That's right, payments starting at just $99 a month at the Gateway Clearance Center, with a great selection of clean used cars, trucks, and SUVs. And right now, every vehicle is sale priced. Enjoy extra discounts for the construction sale going on now at Gateway Clearance Center on South University Drive in Fargo or online at fmclearancecenter.com. KQWB, West Fargo, Fargo Moorhead, and KPFX, HD3 Kindred, Bison 1660. Powered by Gateway Chevrolet, Cadillac, Nissan, and Hyundai in Fargo. And here's what you need to know. Huge breaking NFL news. Multiple outlets are just reporting within the last few moments that the NFL and the Players Association have agreed to a settlement on an 11-game suspension and a $5 million fine for Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson. This means that Watson will be eligible to return in Week 13 on December 4th on the road against, would you believe, his former team the Houston Texans. Again, breaking news announced within the last few moments, multiple outlets reporting that the NFL and the Players Association have reached a settlement on an 11-game suspension and a $5 million fine of Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson. Pittsburgh Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin announcing today Mitch Trubisky will start in Saturday's preseason game against Jacksonville. I'm Isaac Lohenkron. Got the insiders. How you play today, from this moment on, is how you will be remembered. That's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Bringing you what you need to know and a whole lot more. Topics you care about, guests you know, and the conversations you came to hear. The Insiders are presented by Proceed. Need seed? Think Proceed. Now, here are the Insiders. The Insiders. The Insiders. The Insiders. Insiders. The Insiders. Andy Rickoff and Bison great Kyle Emanuel. Welcome on in. We've got another show for you. It's a Thursday edition. Close to the week and we're getting close to another weekend. And only got what this one and the next one. And then that... Weekend after the next weekend, Bison football. That's right. We're getting close. It's the point where you can be like, it's the weekend after the next weekend. It's not like it's the weekend after the next, after the next, after the next, next month. It's it's basically here at this point. Bison Nation, are you ready? Let's ride. You added something. <laughs> I we'll, did. We'll make sure we cut that. Mark it. We're going to cut <laughs> no, that for a promo don't. or a rejoin or something. Uh, from one Kyle Emanuel. Andy Rickoff, Kyle Emanuel, and Micah Bindi in here with you. Micah Bindi, our uh, joint practice correspondent, has already been telling us some of the news is starting to break from Vikings and 49ers camp. We'll get updates from him uh, throughout the day. Don't expect Trey Lance to be playing uh, this weekend in the preseason against the Vikings because of these joint practices. I think Kyle Shanahan has said he's, he feels like he gets more out of the, the joint practices than the actual game, and you get more reps. And so won't be seeing uh, Trey Lance, I would assume, but maybe Kirk Cousins and some few others for the uh, the Vikings. Ben Ellison will play, who had some pretty good reviews after uh, game number one with his blocking as a uh, depth tight end on this team. Good chance he makes this roster, at least uh, on the 53-man roster for the Vikings. So 
Uh, we'll get some of those updates as the, uh, the show goes along. Today, it's a big NDSU Media Day interview kind of day because we still have a bunch of stuff. We talked to like everybody at NDSU Media Days, me and Rob Hip. Uh, so I'll play a few more of those for you on the show as we are now a little over a week from Media Day and just a couple of weeks away from the season. So why not play a few more of these? How about uh, quarterbacks coach and associate head coach Randy Hedberg, owner of one of the longest business cards in college football? Quarterbacks coach, passing game coordinator, and associate head coach, Randy Hedberg, and uh, the czar of football in the state of North Dakota. That's a self-dubbed by me title. That's an, ex- that's an impressive business card. Right it really there. is. Like people look at that. I mean, okay, now I I know he's a football coach. People already know who he is. But let's say they didn't, and he's just like a random guy off the street, and you hit like, oh, okay, this guy mm-hmm. knows what he's doing. This guy's got some got some acumen behind him mm-hmm. for football. Like he, yep. he's he's got some experience. And that he does. Somebody hands you, that, you know, the typical business card. I don't know what the sizes are, but the typical size. The assistant get. manager. Here's my business card. Randy Hedrick pulls into his back pocket. Here's a whole index card. This is my title it's, it's and everything. It's like the, uh, have you seen the episode of The Office when Dwight becomes the, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the um, step-in uh, manager or mm-hmm. whatever, and he makes everyone get those giant business cards to make him stand the out? regional manager. Yeah, so it's like that. you got to stand out a little bit. But when, in the case of Randy Hedrick, you actually need it for yes. all the room. For all of the uh, the titles he has, and obviously a lot of time uh, coaching quarterbacks here at NDSU, one of the constants over this run uh, for at least the last handful and maybe two handfuls of years here at this point. But uh, he will uh, he sat down with Rob Hip. We'll hear that conversation coming up at about uh, eleven twenty five, eleven thirty on the show. Also, Rob's conversation with the senior safety Dawson Weber. Go to the defensive backfield a little bit and talk with Dawson Weber. Get his thoughts as he uh, approaches another year. Big interception in the title game a year ago for Dawson. Him and Michael Tutsi playing together once again. I don't know if Rob asked him any questions about Zach Mathis because he probably doesn't know that Dawson Weber and Zach Mathis are roommates. I would have oh, asked multiple yeah. questions about that should, to find out yes, more yes, about is Zach a messy roommate? Does he help clean? That kind of stuff. Yeah, you got those. Those are the hard hitting, important questions oh, that uh, Bison Nation needs to know. People don't know about that. Stuff. Yeah. We have, oh, but what, what's a cover two cover? Yeah, no one cares. <laughs> Zach Mathis, messy. Is he a good roommate? That kind of. Is he got any cooking skills? We don't. We don't need to know about all the depth at at, at safety and in mm-hmm. the secondary and all the all the fun new things. Defensive coordinator David Braun's going to throw out there. No, yeah. we need to know what kind of roommate Zach Mathis is, right? Julian Woodartrick is going to play some outside linebacker. Do you think you could do that? We don't care. No, no. we just need but, to know. Does he does he vacuum? Does he clean yep. up the How, dirt on what, Zach Mathis? What's what's where's he at with the dishes? Is he a let him soak in the sink type of guy? Or is he is he a guy that cleans them right mm-hmm. away? These are the things we does need. Does he to fold know. his laundry? Does he keep it in the dryer overnight or something like that? Does he have the half clean, half not dirty pile of clothes? Oh, I have that. Yeah. I've started to get away from that a little bit, but I definitely leave stuff in the dryer for like a week at a time sometimes. I have a laundry basket it's there. that's like it's it's supposed to be clean clothes. It is clean clothes. Like they've been washed and they've been sitting in a laundry basket, mostly socks. Now they're like covered in my dog's hair because he sheds really bad, and it's just like at this point it's like, well, do you fold it? You can't really fold it because mm-hmm. it's not really clean anymore. But do you really want to wash it again? And they, so it's definitely it's just wrinkled. sitting there. That's the problem. Yeah. Too. Oh, it's wrinkled for mm-hmm. sure. I'm really bad with laundry. Yes, I am too. So just, that would be a mid-season, like early season. Yeah, NDSU media avails. I'll ask Dawson Weber those questions. Before I was married, um, I would just throw my clean laundry because I have a big bed, a king size bed. So I just throw it on like the corner of, of one side and then okay. I would just sleep there, you know, and it would just sit on my bed. <laughs> really? Because I did, yeah, I've never done that. I just sleep on one side and then leave the clean laundry on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> never ever have I done that one. Really? I've left stuff in the hamper. You're like, I have like a, it's not a basket, but it's kind of a basket. Yeah. I'll leave it in there. Oh yeah. Not I've done on that the bed too, but what, what happens if that thing's already full? I just leave it now in you the dryer. Well, what if you need to do another another load of laundry? But then you really got to start folding the col- the clothes. You got three <laughs> loads of clean clothes, and you haven't folded any you, of good. them yet? I'm not Goodness good. gracious, Kyle Emanuel. I got too many clothes. Yes. Uh, so we'll hear that conversation with Dawson Weber probably around uh, 1230 on the show. Then I've got a couple as well from my time at NDSU Media Day. So it'll be a split between me and Rob uh, on uh, today's show. We'll hear from uh, the offensive line coach, Dan Larson. There's a spot open there, and hey, just because the other four returners doesn't mean those spots are safe either. There's a lot of competition in the Rams' room. We'll hear from uh, Dan Larson, and then I don't know if he's the, he's definitely the old guy in the room. I don't know if they you know, call him Grandpa Wagey or anything, but Spencer Wagey, who's like 35. Him and Michael Tutsi. Like. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Six fall camps. Oof. Can you imagine that? Because you had, well, I I guess you had five. five. Yeah, you had only five, one more. and then another five in the NFL. So, yeah, I guess I can't imagine. But at least when you fall camp, NFL, easier in the NFL? It is. Yeah. It, it's because well, the restrictions they have on it. Uh, it's more physical, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, it's more intense. Yeah. Like I've talked about before, like the like everyone's fighting for a job. Like in college, yeah, it's don't get me wrong, it's intense, but freshmen aren't necessarily worried about getting cut. You know, I, I think there is a, a certain point, certain threshold. You get too many guys on a team, you could cut a freshman or, a, you know, a walk on things like that. But there's, there's not the same intensity of guys fighting for a job, literally fighting for maybe not millions of dollars as an undrafted free agent, but like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Guys are fighting for a job for that spot. So it's a little bit different from that standpoint, but we would double rep at NDSU. We'd have two, two sets of offense, two sets of defense going at the same time. You don't do that in the NFL. You just didn't have enough guys. So it was sometimes as a rookie, you get through individual, you get through special teams. Like you're not getting many reps. So now it's, so it's, it's harder in, in certain aspects from a mental standpoint, from a trying to stay into it, trying to prove yourself standpoint. But from a just purely like physical, like getting out there grinding, taking. I mean, we would sometimes we wouldn't even have a sub uh, at defensive end. You just took every rep, didn't have a sub. Just go out there and thirty minutes a team, you're in for every play. You know, so mm-hmm. like, things like that were definitely harder in college. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. And it, I mean, is the, what's the bigger step? High school to college, college NFL. Ooh, good question. Yeah, I would feel like personally, I just outside looking in, guy never, never played football. It'd be high school to college. I think it was. Okay, I think it was from uh, just like a uh, like a shock factor of mm-hmm. you know, and I've you've asked me about this, and I told you about my freshman year at NDSU. Yeah, and just I didn't know the schedule. I thought we were going to be a couple hours a day, and then we'd be done. Football football lingo is truly like a different language, and now every team is slightly different. And they'll switch it up, but like when I got to the NFL, I knew the terms. And if they had a different term for a term, I already knew. Okay, you can just kind of replace that. So it was a little bit easier going from college to the NFL from a mental standpoint. Um, physically, you're pretty developed. As I was almost 24 when I got to the NFL, so from a, just a physicality standpoint, like I was already where I needed to be for the most part. Or you come from high school, like a lot of guys still have a lot of growing to do. They got to get in the weight room. Literally, your Mo- body hasn't stopped growing. Exactly. Most people need to put weight on at almost every position. I mean, even DBs, like a lot of times, they, there's weight to be put on. So, I would probably say high school to college was was the bigger bigger jump and the bigger shock factor mm-hmm. for me. Probably took you longer to get used to it. I mean, that's why freshmen don't play at NDC. Right. because they're not, a lot of one, they don't know the playbook or know how to learn the playbook. Really, you haven't gone through that in depth learning of a playbook before college typically and then also you just you haven't grown enough physically and there's a less time too uh i mean now i know it's, it's different now some guys will be up here the entire summer some guys are even and maybe not so much at ndsu but they're enrolling in spring ball they're already up at ndsu whereas the nfl i had otas got up there rookie mini camp otas to to learn the playbook and kind of get acclimated to the playbook and to san diego and to a new team and then you have you know, a little time off in the summer, and then you come back. And now you still have an entire training camp, a couple preseason games to get used to things. So, from that standpoint, it was slightly easier going to the NFL. So we've got that all that on deck for you, Spencer Wagey. With my conversations with Spencer Wagey and Dan Larson, then Rob's conversations with uh, Randy Hedberg and also Dawson Weber, plus a chance for Kyle to to flex his yeah. Bison knowledge a little bit. Well, that's technically for me to flex right. the little knowledge I have. Uh, Kyle came up with the idea to do Bison Trivia. And we're going to get the fans involved in this. We'll do it in the second hour. So this is your, your early warning here. We're going to give away. Call in. Yeah, call a, in. Call us, you know, call us up, 701-476-1660. If I don't know the answer to one, we'll get the fans involved. And if uh, you get one right, there's there's a prize on the line for you. Maybe some Bison swag or possibly a yard sign out there. I put my yard sign up today, by the way. There you go. It's up. It's looking good. Yeah. No one's I, taking I, it yet? No one's. Well, no. Okay. Just put it up. Literally this morning, so I nice. hope no one's taking it. Um, I'll be honest; I didn't even know. I don't think I knew the answer to two of these that well, I came I up with. I had won't. to look it up. Um, but I, I was pretty nice. I think okay. there's some easy ones in here. There's some a little bit more difficult. If you're a, if you're a NDSU fan that's been a, around a while, some of them will be easy. Um, yeah, I'm looking for. I got to give a, a shout out to Coach Priz. And Priz, I'm not going to offend him because he knows I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's like Priziano. It's something Italian. But anyway, he's a coach at Shanley. He's like, oh, hey, gotcha. he, listens to the, he listens to the show. And he's like, you guys should do Bison Trivia. I was like, you know what? That's a good idea, Priz. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to 
see if I can get that done for you. So maybe Priz will call in if he's listening. Yeah. And uh, see if he can get some of these answers right. There we go. Get, get some more of the, uh, the Shanley coaches questions. on to learn more about Kyle Emanuel's yeah. coaching abilities. we got five so, questions. So. Five questions, Bison Trivia. In the second hour, so that'll be your chance. We'll tell you when to call in, 701-476-1660, and uh, possibly an NDSU yard sign if I can't get one right. Maybe we'll go five for five. I don't think you will. Okay. I don't, I don't think, think you will either. Wow. Well, there is literally see. no confidence for me in this room. I like you it. said it yourself. Yeah. You have limited I won't wise knowledge. Yeah. I don't, um, I don't think you'll get – I think two of them will be kind of tough. But one of them I gave you multiple choice, so there's another teaser. Oh, okay. So I used to got a chance to guess on that one. Um, one of them is not. You just is one count. of them all of the above? Is that one of the choices? No. Okay. I no. always picked all of the above on Scantrons or something. It was almost all of the above. But then they do like the C and D or all of the above. Right. You know, yeah, they, they try like to trick you. I hated teachers right. that did that. That was just mean. Um, so that that's coming up later. Looking forward to Bison Trivia. Uh, we're here inside the Theroton Ethanol Broadcast Center, and you can watch us live on Facebook on the Horse Cam that Micah Bindi's got up and running. Appreciate all of you guys watching out there. You can leave us a comment, and you can watch the show live on our Facebook page, Bison1660. Also go there and like that one. We're closing in on that 3,000 mark. And go like our, uh, our YouTube page as well that is up and operational. Been seeing a lot of folks subscribing to the YouTube page with Bison 1660. Some live interviews, some other things there that we can uh, connect with the NDSU staff and players and put that up there for you. Uh, some more of that latest info and latest news on NDSU from us here at Bison 1660. We do have a little bit of uh, breaking news that broke right before the show, so we'll hit the sounder and tell you what's happening in the NFL. This broke literally about three minutes before the show started. The NFL and the NFLPA have reached an agreement on Deshaun Watson. Obviously, we know he was suspended for six games from the independent arbiter, uh, and then the NFL appealed that, and you know, it looked like they were going to go for the, the jugular. They were going to go for the full year, a massive fine, uh, possibly having to go to, to rehab for Deshaun Watson as well and other things, uh, that they were going to you know, appeal it, and it wasn't going to be Roger Goodell hearing the appeal, but it was someone that Roger was going to appoint, and you kind of – Saw where this one was going to end up if it went down that road. Well, the NFLPA was wanting to uh, go out and try and head that off at the pass, so to speak. And they uh, went out and got a settlement done with the NFL. And uh, that is an 11-game suspension. So instead of six games, it basically doubled from 6 to 11. And also a $5 million fine. There was no fine previously. He would have lost game checks from the six games. But as we mentioned, his salary was basically nothing comparatively in the NFL this year. For a quarterback, year. it was nothing. For a million dollars. A million dollars for a quarterback. Uh, but, yes, basically nothing in terms of the NFL. Uh, he would have lost some game checks, but it was like a total of $300,000 or something like that he would have lost. Now he loses $5 million. $5 million fine plus. Plus 11 games. Plus 11 games worth of, of game checks, which is going to be more than the. You know, so it will be closer to getting close Over to a six, half million yeah, there. Closer mm-hmm. to you know, five point. Seven five point eight million dollars he's going to lose total. total. Mm-hmm. So that is uh, what. And again, NFL. I don't know if this was planned. It probably wasn't. I'm not. There's no conspiracy theory here. So Watson will have an eleven game suspension. The Browns have a week twelve bye, so they won't, won't won't be playing on week twelve either. Do you want to take one random stab at who the Browns face week thirteen? Um, Steelers. No. Ravens. No. Someone in the comments. When I say it, you're going to be like, oh, duh. Oh, Texans. Yep. yep. They face, of course, the Houston Texans nice. week 13. Oh, conspiracy the way, for sure. Yeah, They were right? like, oh, it's going to be 12 games. Oh, we don't want him to miss out, and that'll be a fun one for him to come back for. Yeah. Okay, we'll make it 11. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, week 12 is their bye. It's probably like, oh, we're going to make it 13 or 14, and then you're like, oh, wait. Well, I don't think the bye week counts. Probably as a, not. As a game. Yeah, so it could have been 12 games, and then they like see that. And like, yeah, ooh, double it National to TV, mm-hmm. Deshaun Watson's back, all the controversy surrounding it. Should have been a full season against his former team. And we flex that thing to Monday night. Use all that power of the NFL. We, we were talking yesterday, and this is kind of weird. The, the last game he played, I was I was one of his teammates. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, he didn't play last year. Yeah, he was on the team. He was on the I don't even think he dressed, though, did he, for games last year? Last year, team. no. Yeah. He, he wasn't even, even around dress. the team last right. year. He was for like – I feel like he was early on in training camp for like a couple of practices. I remember seeing him out there. I was like, but he's not going to play. I was like, so why is he there? He didn't want to be with the Texans anyway. Um, but, yeah, the last time he I think he, he was played, just there so he wasn't losing money from not being at yeah. mandatory practice. Marshawn Lynch, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Yeah, and then yeah. 
him, the team, and the NFL kind of all agreed, just leave. We'll keep just, paying you. Yeah, just don't And play. the NFL was like, if he's not playing, we don't have to come down with some sort of suspension because it's not going to be an issue. So. Yeah, it gave him a little more time, I guess, to figure yeah. it out. Yeah, we were talking. I was like, did he – did they – when they factored in this 11 games, did they factor in time served? I don't think so because, like you said, you know, you were mentioning a, he just still got paid last yeah. year, so I don't think they would have yeah, factored people always, that in. People were bringing it up like, oh, time served, or he, he didn't play last year either. That should count. I'm like, he still got paid, and he had a good contract last year. He yes, wasn't he on did. that rookie deal or anything, I don't think. So, like, yeah, I don't know if that would have counted in my book. But they come to an agreement on an 11-game suspension and a $5 million fine. To me, this kind of – this fits obviously a lot more than the six game suspension in my mind fits the crime so to speak you couldn't have got there's gonna be people that say it should have been a year well the nfl pa is going to take their chances with the the appeals process if, if that's uh, the case if the nfl really dug their heels in and, and stuck to a year suspension this kind of tells me though that it probably was going to be a year the nfl pa saying let's just take a deal where it doubles the amount yeah. of games he misses and an extra five million dollars which is not nothing that's definitely a little something. Now, Deshaun's got a 200 something million dollar deal. Again, $5 million is it's $5 million. It's a little bit of a slap on the wrist to someone like that, but you know, it's obviously a lot more than what they, they find him before. To me, it says that the NFLPA was really worried. Like, this was probably going to be a year. It really looked that way. And it's for if you're the Browns, I mean, this, this might as well be a season, right? right? I mean, because if you don't, if you don't perform well in those first 11 games, it does not matter. He comes back and you're, you know, you went, you've won two or three games. And I'm, I'm not saying that's what that will happen, but like for them, like your season, I, well, you know, I say that they, they could be still fighting for a playoff spot at that point. So I guess, you know, you get your guy back at that point, but what's he going to look like? You know, mm-hmm. I think that's the thing that not a lot of people are talking about. Like, he didn't play last year. He's not going to play the first 11 games this year. That's a long time off of football. You got a couple snaps in a preseason game and a couple practices under his belt in the last two years. I know what it was like for me coming back, and I wasn't playing quarterback. I mean, it felt like you were jumping on a bicycle again for the first time in a long time, you know, like or jumping on a bicycle for the first time, like trying to learn something all over again that you thought you knew at one point. So I think it's going to be – I think it's going to be a little rocky for – I would think. Don't you, Andy? I mean – I would agree with you. I will say – I just looked up the Brown schedule. It's not necessarily Murderer's Row early when on. When he comes back. Oh, early, early on. Early on. The games will be missing, which is right. – as of now, which Jacoby Brissett, that will be the quarterback. I think the other thing that, again, ties back to Fargo, ties back to NDSU, 11 games. If he was going to miss six, you're thinking, oh, even if we're like two and four, comes yeah, we, back, we can still get back into this thing, right? And now with 11 games, if I'm the Browns, and I say, we got a Super Bowl roster. This team, this team's good enough to, to make a run, you know, have some success and get to the playoffs – and it's a you know coaching staff that's in their second year. Kevin Stefanski is probably like we got to actually third year now. But we got to make some moves and, and really get this thing going. Do you trade for Jimmy Garoppolo? Right? Does Jacoby Brissett for eleven games? You're thinking, we, for four wins, we're four and seven. Yeah, you know you just you can't do that. You're Even trust, five or six wins. You're not trusting Josh Rosen with the no, keys of the car. Definitely not. I think this absolutely one hundred percent brings into play Jimmy Garoppolo to Cleveland for one year. He's got a one year deal. I think that would make sense, and that would clear up the quarterback room for for Trey Lance. Now, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be released anyways. What's the compensation going to be? Fourth-round pick, fifth-round pick? I don't know. One thing this does is it puts more leverage in the 49ers' court to be like, hey, you need a guy. Right. You absolutely do, and we got the guy, the only one that's available that's good enough. So maybe you get a little bit more now from Cleveland if they get desperate, but that may be throwing lost money or good money after bad money, basically, there, whatever the, the gambling term is. Um, so we'll see. I think Jimmy Garoppolo could be on his way to Cleveland. But this is the Browns' schedule, first 11 games. Tell me what you think. At the Panthers, Baker Mayfield revenge game. We'll see. Eh, never know week one. Never know week one. Home against the Jets. Okay. Home against the Steelers. Don't know about the Steelers yeah, a lot early that, on in the season. Right. At the Falcons, win. Should be a win. Should be a win. Home against the Chargers. Tough team, but Chargers have lost some road games the last couple of years. They haven't been unbeatable. So – it's a long road trip, too. Exactly, from uh, L.A. to Cleveland. Home against the Patriots. Mac Jones, good team. I think Bill Belichick will do some things you know, defensively. Uh, then you're, it does toughen up here. So that's like your first, what, that's your first six. Six, yep. So if he'd only lost six games, that's all he would have been missing. You could have done some damage in those six games. But the next five are um, at the Ravens, home against the Bengals, at the Dolphins, at the Bills, home against the Bucks. Those five are the ones that could hurt if yeah. you don't have a good quarterback. Yeah, you get to that point, and it's like 
you got to you got to at least be in a position for when mm-hmm. he comes back to like, okay, do we even have a chance to make a run at this at this thing? You know, and I, I don't know what that division. We talked about that division the other day, and I don't know what that division is going to look like. Um, I don't think anyone's going to run away with. It. I mean, if, I mean, who do you trust? Obviously, you probably trust the Bengals the most. I think yep. the Ravens could also be good. You just never know. Stay healthy. What do you think is going to happen with Lamar Jackson? This it could be one of those years. We've seen it before. Guys in the past, you get a contract year, a guy who wants to make his money, he comes out and performs pretty well. And I, I think we could see that from Lamar Jackson this year. But you know, what's this division going to look like? Because remember, you only have to fit, you only have to win your division, and you're in the playoffs. So mm-hmm. you know, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see where the Browns are, and especially when they get when they do get Deshaun Watson back. And if they trade for Jimmy Garoppolo and things are humming, do you play him? That is the one thing it would bring in. So if you suspend it for a year, yeah, Jimmy Garoppolo makes tons of sense. But let's say he brings Jimmy Garoppolo in for 11 games, and then somehow they win seven of them. They're seven and four. Or eight of them, or even, you know, it's like. Can you really go to this? And then if you don't, then Deshaun's like, you traded for me. You give me like, what are you not exactly. starting me for? You know, then, then you start the controversy. That would be <laughs> that would be fun to see. That would not be a fun job to have there if no. you're Kevin Stefanski and trying to figure that one out. I mean, it's the best situation, right? Because he got you the wins you needed during that time. Right. But now it's, if you bring Deshaun in and you lose that first game, who doesn't look good, you're like, ooh. I don't do think I'd play him. Yeah. I, if, we're, if you're eight and three in those eleven games, or even seven and four, and you're fighting for a playoff spot, and things are clicking, especially offensively. Now, maybe if you're seven and four, and somehow your offense is struggling, okay, and then now we don't have mm-hmm. to, you know, bring in Deshaun, or now we do bring in Deshaun Watson because offense wasn't looking great at the time. But let's say you're seven and four, even six and five, and the offense is not the issue. It's a defense or something like Jimmy Garoppolo has things humming on the offense. I'm leaving him in mm-hmm. at least for a while, right. at least for a game or two. Let Deshaun Watson get his feet back underneath him a little bit and before I make that change. I would tend to agree with you, but that would be an interesting decision to have to make if that's uh, what it comes to. We'll see if Jimmy Garoppolo gets traded there. It makes some sense now with uh, Deshaun Watson being suspended for 11 games and getting a $5 million fine. Again, that's not the uh, the appeal. That is a settlement between the NFL and the NFL PA. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Rob Hipp's conversation with one Randy Hedberg when we come back here on The Insiders. This is the Insiders on your exclusive home for North Dakota State Athletics, Bison 1660. Proceeds Company core values, in my eyes, are trust, integrity, and fulfilling the promise. Proceeds have been in business for 30 years for a reason. They keep things simple, they watch what their farmer needs, and they take care of it. We promise what we deliver. Proceed has had some of the same customers for the past 30 years as they started with. With that comes the integrity that we live by at Post. We want to be that trusted advisor with them, their farm, their family. Hi, this is Chris with Express Employment Professionals. The annual sugar beet harvest is here, and we are now in the process of hiring over 1,300 people. And you could harvest yourself up to $3,200 in just two short weeks. Positions are filling fast, so pile on and call today, 888-791-6738. Express Employment Professionals. The annual sugar beet harvest is here, and we are now in the process of hiring over 1,300 people. And you could harvest yourself up to $3,200 in just two short weeks. Positions are filling fast. So pile on and call today, 888-791-6738. Hey, have you checked out the new and used truck selection at Muscatels lately? We do love our trucks. And men and women in most all occupations have enjoyed Muscatel's stellar award-winning service. Muscatel Burns Ford has a good selection to choose from now for work or play. So stop in Muscatel Burns Ford on Highway 10 in Holly or online at muscatelburnsford.com. Say it with me. Get your next Ford from Ward. Mark your calendars for September 24th and join the 14th annual Celebrity Dinner and Auction at the Fargo Air Museum. The celebrity plane for 2022 is the F-101B Voodoo. This is in honor of the North Dakota Air National Guard winning the 1970 and 1972 U.S. Air Force Aerial Gunnery Competition under the direction of Major General Alexander McDonald. Salute to the winning legacy is this year's theme. Enjoy an evening of entertainment, food, live and silent auctions, and more. Purchase your tickets at FargoAirMuseum.org. What's cooler than heating your water with an electric water heater? Let me think about that. Saving money at the same time. Yeah, that is cool. With an electric water heater, you can cut your electricity rates in half with off-peak heating. It's efficient, too. And you can get up to $700 just for installing one. I like what I'm hearing. It's the smart and cool way to heat your water. Visit CassCountyElectric.com to learn more about saving with an electric water heater. 
Yeah, this was pretty wild, especially for us. I heard about this, but I just thought, YOLO. We were both a little, eh, but experimenting's fun. When I found out he was into it, I was like, yep, let's just do it. Hard tea, lemonade, same time, what? Nice hard teas, half and half is something we both could drink and enjoy together. Nice hard teas, half and half, I ain't never going back. Half and half, whoop whoop. Oh, calm down, honey, they get it. Oh, oh, sorry. Slam summer. Nice hard tea. Drink hard, play nice. Nice. Party responsibly. Rough days in camp. Was making Trey Lance the starting QB the right move for the 49ers? That's what people are talking about today on some of the national talkers. No matter good or bad, I guess you can say the, the, the old cliche is there's no such thing as bad publicity. But everybody is talking about Trey this offseason. Everyone. Everyone. Well, Every show. I think he's the, correct me if I'm wrong, but he's like the second-year quarterback where you don't know as much, right? Because he only mm-hmm. played two games last year. Yeah. So like every, Mahomes a couple of years back. Yeah, exactly. So they kind of know what they're getting with the other guys. Not that you know. Like Trevor Lawrence had a really bad year, so I, I still think he'd be a good, great talking point, the number one overall pick. But you just didn't see a ton from Trey. And I think he has probably one of the better rosters of the second. Like at, at, they're ready expectations. to win. Yeah, there's expectations there. And I think people have, have seen him flash the talent. And mm-hmm. so they're, you know, they're excited. They're ready to see what he can do as a starter. And so, yeah, it seems like every time I've been here, Andy, we look up at the TV screen and they're talking about Trey. Someone is mm-hmm. every single time. Every time. He's got a lot of uh, people talking about him and a lot of publicity with him and the 49ers. Again, he's in uh, joint practices with the Vikings. We'll go to Micah Bindi, our correspondent here a little bit later on in this hour and also in hour number two, uh, live on social media from Vikings training camp. We also heard that the Vikings are actually busing in mu- multiple buses from Marshall, Trey's hometown of Marshall, Minnesota, busing in a bunch of people to Vikings training camp. You know, the team that plays there, some of his family, friends, other people, they're busing them from Marshall to Egan, where the Vikings facility is at, about three hours away. So not just down the road or anything. It's a decent drive. So classy move there by the Vikings. I am wondering why there's no buses sent to Fargo. Yeah, because we need to get get Micah down there so we can have, like, actually, he's actually live (laughs) on site. Correspondent. That'd be be dope. (laughs) Dope. (laughs) Total millennial. He had the insider information. You had the inside source there. Is that how you found out that they were busting in? You, you have a guy? You got a guy down there? Yeah, I had a guy on Twitter that I follow. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. The Twitter guy. Okay. Live I, I figured you Twitter. had someone like texting you. Or, you know, you got all the sources down there at camp. It's actually texting Trey. That's who it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's texting me mid-practice, kind of like every single snap. This is what happened. I torched this guy. He probably gave his phone to a punter or a kicker who was just standing over there. Mm-hmm. Maybe a long snapper. All I know is the Vikings are now going 17 and 0, and Kirk Cousins is the MVP because he swore yesterday. So, or is it a bad omen? No, not bad omen. Mm, I don't he's know. got he's feisty this year. He's like out to prove people. He's got the chip on his shoulder, Kyle. He's like Walter White from Breaking Bad. He's yep. he's going bad now. And yeah. he's going to be dangerous. Yeah. There's breaking point. He's feeling dangerous. Mm-hmm. Who said that? Someone said that. Baker Mayfield. That's right. He woke up feeling dangerous. Yeah, that's woke what up it was. Feeling dangerous. Now woke up in Carolina, the second team in four <laughs> years. Uh, we're live inside the Theraldson Ethanol Broadcast Center, the nation's one of the nation's largest ethanol facilities, a 175 million gallon per year ethanol plant located just west of Castleton. Fuel your future by joining the growing team today. View open positions at theraldsonethanol.com. And this hour on a Thursday of the Insiders is brought to you by Barcode in West Fargo. Not just your favorite for happy hours and late night fun, their lunch special is delicious as well. And uh, they get you in and out Quick at Barcode in West Fargo. Try their lunch pizza special Monday through Friday from 11 to 2. So going on right now, get any 16-inch handmade pizza for half price with the purchase of two drinks. Barcode just south of Costco in West Fargo. Well, let's go to uh, Rob Hip, the new voice of the Bison. Nice enough to be around here all week. Been great to get to know him a little bit more. You all will as well once we uh, have him on the show on a more permanent basis. But earlier last week, he caught up with uh, quarterbacks coach, associate head coach, passing game coordinator, and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, Randy Hedberg with Rob Hip. Here's that conversation. 
Rob Pipp here with associate head coach, passing game coordinator, and quarterbacks coach Randy Hedberg. Of course, former NFL quarterback, NDSU quarterbacks coach since 2014. Mentored three NFL draft picks in eight seasons here at NDSU, including two quarterbacks selected in the top three overall at the NFL draft. We all know the names, coach. We won't dig into those. Talking a little bit about this season. Cam Miller, really been a force for this Bison team, closing in on 2,000 yards since 2020. Really got a, had to step into a role last season. Did very well, of course. Had a great support cast behind him with Quincy Patterson. Coach, first question, just how has he continued to develop this offseason? What can we expect from him heading into the season? Well, I think the biggest thing, Rob, that, uh, that I've seen with Cam is his maturity uh, has gotten so much better, plus his leadership. His leadership of our team has taken up. I think he sees it as his team now offensively, and I think he's really taken a leadership role amongst our uh, offensive team members, and the guys look up to him and they expect him to be the leader, and they expect him to make plays, and I think that's the biggest thing I've seen from him. I asked head coach Ants this in the press conference earlier a little bit about Cole Payton. This young man has NFL talent written on him. Many are talking about that. He was a redshirt freshman last season who saw limited playing time, of course, but can you talk a little more about the talent he has and what can we expect from him this season? Well, Cole is uh, hes a tremendous athlete. He's a big young man. He's probably close to 6'3 and 230 pounds. Um, uh, very athletic. Uh, can probably run the ball and throw the ball in a combination probably better than any quarterback uh, that we have on our team right now but you know he's he's still learning he's still getting the, uh, the process going was a great winner in high school at Westside High School in Omaha won a state championship as a senior uh, so he's been, he's been around winning football so he's going to be a big part of what we do this season um, and play a big role with this and I think the guys really enjoy him being behind center of course quarterback leads the team a lot of pressure behind those guys how have you just been able to continue to mentor at this level and all the success built around this program just to keep these guys level-headed and understand the important role that they have well I think the biggest thing Rob is that you know I, I've learned as much from from them as I hope they've learned from me because I, I take something from Carson and Easton and Trey and try to you know put it into Cam and and Cole and a little bit of everything you know and all three of those guys were different guys I mean they, they didn't none of them were the same uh, and that's just the way Cam and Cole are. They're not the same type of player as the other three or them two, or those two, you know. So I think the biggest thing I've seen from them and trying to impart in them is just do the, the be attentive to detail and try to be as detailed in your work as possible um, and good things will happen. Finally, last question, Coach. What are some areas with your quarterbacks that you've seen tremendous success with? There's been so much of that over the years, and especially recently. And then where do you feel that there needs to be some improvement heading into this season? Well, I think the biggest thing that uh, I've seen from our guys is just uh, being able to prepare each week for each game. And our guys have a pretty rigorous schedule once we get into the season from a preparation standpoint for the, each opponent that we play. And I think they can take it to another level, to be honest with you. I think they can really get better in their preparation and and uh, figure it out how defenses are playing us and try to get a better handle on each opponent and what they're doing and defensive tells, defensive coverages, what are they doing and pressures. That's the biggest thing because our quarterbacks set protections at the line of scrimmage, so they have to they have to have a lot, good understanding of defense and and who the unblocked guys are and I think that's the biggest thing we can improve on. Once again, that's Coach Randy Hedberg. Coach, appreciate your time. Looking forward to getting to know you a lot more and just really enjoying the success that you've helped build here in this culture at North Dakota State. Thank you very much. That'd be Randy Hedberg with Rob Hip talking about the quarterbacks. Obviously, Cam Miller. We all want to see his development. What's the next step for Cam? But you know, especially in fall camp. Cole Payton, and there's a chance we always, you know, there's a couple of blowouts every year. It's a chance that happens early in, in the season with a couple of games. You might see more of Cole Payton instead of being the, the third guy under the field like he maybe was earlier on because of Quincy and, and Cam. Might see him in a couple more series, maybe a chance to throw the ball just a little bit more and see more of what Cole Payton and how that development is going, which I think is an interesting angle to this season. Yeah, I think that's what everyone wants to know: is are you going to have a little bit of a two quarterback system? Maybe not two quarterback. Um, in the sense of like rotating series, but like, are you going to have a package for him? Is there, they, they had one for Cam early on in, in his career in the spring season. Remember, he would come in and kind of be the running quarterback. Well, you, they absolutely had one for Quincy last year. Obviously, had one for Quincy last year. So, are you going to do that again? I think that's what everyone wants to know. And I, I would assume if you do, you're not showing it early, you know, right. early on against Drake, maybe 
not at all, unless for some reason that game is close. Like, you're not going to show it early, maybe not in, even until the Arizona game. Um, just so teams don't know. Teams yeah. can't prepare for it. Was it the JMU game or the ETSU game where they threw the ball back to Quincy? I think and it was – snapped it to I, him. I and think it was him. JMU, yeah. I believe. And, they, I mean, and it was brilliantly designed by uh, Tyler. He was wide open for like a 30-yard touchdown, and he just – Took his eyes I off the know. ball, and that was everyone was waiting for that too. Like, mm-hmm. okay, well, when is, when's Quincy actually going to throw the ball? We know he can throw it a little yep. bit. Like, when's he actually going to do it? And then they designed that play. It's like, oh, he handed brilliant. it off and then threw it back to him, and ugh. wide open, wide open. And you know, he was asking for it every oh, week too. He, he Absolutely, was, he was bummed. Yep. He was bummed. And then when they they called it, and once you call it and it doesn't work, we're not going back. No, nope, it's, it's not going to happen. Not this year, at least. You nope. know, it was like the Jabril Cox. Uh, Wildcat quarterback thing they did that one play in the championship game oh, yeah. a couple years back and he like slipped and fell. Didn't well, work. that's never yeah. going to happen Fired. ever again. That's what happens in in practice. You do one of those in practice and it doesn't look good. Fired. Same thing with blitzes uh, mm-hmm. on the defensive side. Like coaches will drop new blitzes and it's funny because you get into practice and they're like, hey, like they'll come up like kind of whisper to a couple guys like, hey, make sure you got this on it. Like they want it to look good and they're like yep. giving you all these hints because if it doesn't look good in practice. Guess what? It ain't getting called in the game. Nope. It might not even be on the play sheet. And even if it is, even if it does stay on the play sheet, it's not getting called. No. Nope. So it's got to look good in practice. Got to look good, and sometimes it looks good in practice, and then in the game, it's like, correct, yep, didn't work. That's right. It, and again, the Quincy play, I, it worked great. It looked phenomenal. Oh, yeah. There was just one missing part, the Catching catch, the which you know he can do. The next time he, the next time that play would have gotten called, Quincy would have been looking at thing, all the way into his hands. Absolutely. It's one of those things where it almost gets built up too much mm-hmm. and you put too much pressure on yourself and then you just forget the one exactly. simple part of, oh, got to catch the ball. Got to catch it. <laughs> yep, that's, that's why you're a quarterback. I guarantee you the wide receivers were saying oh, yeah. that when he came back to the sidelines. But, yeah, is there a package for Cole Payton? Is there that when you get both quarterbacks on the field a little bit? I, we might see it a little bit early. It's also one of those things where you know, you either put it out there or you don't. Tape wise, you either put it out there against Drake, and now everybody's got to spend twenty minutes. You know, that's, that's what we hear: too. twenty minutes yep. looking at the, the that package and preparing for it, and you never use it again, or you never use it until SDSU week or whatever, and then you pull it out and it's a surprise type of thing. Yeah, right. Th- that's true. No, hundred percent. There's there's two two ways of looking at it. Exactly like you just said. You know, do we do we just hold on to it and people don't know about it, or do we throw? And it might not even be that. It might be something else. They might throw out a formation or just some mm-hmm. random play that teams have never done. It, it's kind of like the whole extra point thing when you know NDSU Swinging does gate. this. The whole swing gate. You put guys out and now, or even on goal line, sometimes teams will do that. Just now, you got to spend five ten minutes in practice talking about it. And you might never do it. Mm-hmm. So there, there's a there's a give and take there. There's, they're, they're playing a little game of chess there uh, always with the coaching staffs. You gotta uh, before we take a break. I wanted to play a couple of sound bites today that I, I oh, thought no. were, were somewhat interesting. Uh, switching from NDSU's quarterback to uh, the Vikings quarterback on this one. Do we have to? Um, you're a big fantasy football guy. We're going to get you into it. Have Not. you gotten into a league yet? Nope. Okay, we're going to force you. I haven't you even been that. invited. You say no too many times, you just stop getting invited. And I'm okay with that. We're going to find somebody that can invite you. No, nope, they're all full. I'm Everyone. in six leagues. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. was me a couple of years ago. How I was like five. Is- now I limit myself. One Three them, is my limit. One of them was almost too much for me. One. The biggest problem he, Mike is going to have with six is you have that one league where like you need just pick uh, you you need Adam Thielen to catch like a touchdown in three hundred yards or like a hundred yards uh, and a team. touchdown for one team to win win that game, but you also need him to like not get a hundred yards in the other one. So you right. got to find oh, the that sweet spot. Yeah, that already happened. Against- it's terrible. It happens every week when you get more than three teams. Because the fun part week. about fantasy is you get a root for people you wouldn't normally root for, right? And mm-hmm. then you get to that point, it's like, well, now they just kind of cancel each other out. Yep. I did a basketball one once in like college, NBA. Yeah. I think I looked at it like three times. Don't couldn't you tell you if guy. I won. Perfect. Couldn't tell. You. I don't even know. Well, Matthew Berry is a big name in the fantasy football community. Huge name, and was with ESPN for a very long time. Actually, just recently left. ESPN went to uh, to Roto World and started doing some other stuff over there. Uh, he had an interesting little soundbite on one Kirk Cousins and a uh, possible uh, you know dark horse for a uh, you know what was it a uh, not a dark horse uh, he'll say it here in the clip but uh, they don't sound stupid that's okay just play the clip. Kirk Cousins over forty touchdown passes. 
Is that bold enough? Poster bold child for weight on quarterback <laughs> is Kirk Cousins for me. I love that prediction. Is that, Michael, is that, is that bold enough or do I need to go bolder with Kirk Cousins? Is that Over bold? 40? Do I want you to go 50? Is that, is that, no, 40's man, good. That's, like, 40's that's great. thermonuclear, Matthew. That's <laughs> okay. thermonuclear. I want to make sure that was bold enough because – what I was going to say is, like, if I want to go Super Bowl, I say that Super Bowl, I might say Kirk Cousins leads the NFL in touchdown passes. I'm just telling you, look, getting Kevin O'Connell and getting Wes Phillips into that offense, I think people forget, like, I'd say like over 40 touchdown passes. He threw 33 last year. Yeah, his career high is 35. He, he, right, yeah. right. He's thrown over 30 each of the last two years. Um, and again, that's when been a, with been a conservative offense, a defensive-minded head coach. Bottom 14 in, in, in pass rate last year? Yeah, they were bottom 14 in pass yeah. rate, the, yeah. the Vikings were. Yeah. And so I think you think about what Matthew Stafford did last year in, this same, in, in a similar offense. Yeah. Uh, and Kevin O'Connell, there, there is a little bit of experience there with, with, uh, with Kirk. Yeah, I think, I like I think that offense is going to explode. I think people are sleeping on it. Again, I love the weapons, yeah. and I love the philosophy. So that's my bold prediction. That's the bold prediction from one Matthew Barry that Kirk Cousins, not only 40 touchdowns, but could lead the league in touchdown passes. At 33 last year, 35 the year before, and that was in a run, heavy yeah. run first offense. I don't even think that's that bold. I think maybe 45 would have been a better number to pay. He had 33 yeah. last year, and like everything he just said there, you had a defensive-minded head coach, you were run first offense, all the checkdowns and stuff that they loved to do there in Minnesota yep. the last couple of years, so... He has 33 last year. I think it's I think it's definitely within the realm of possibility. I was like, when he first said that, I was like, how many did he have? I had to look it up. And then he said it, but I was like, I, I was thinking he had like 22, 25, 33. Yeah. Not that far off. The year off. before with Justin Jefferson. You know, the year of Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, if you guys stay healthy, do you have a better tight end this year in Irv Smith, possibly, that, that plays more games and slightly improved offensive line? Yeah, I definitely think it's a, a possibility there, but – if you were to lead the league, that, maybe that's your, your bold prediction. That's the word I was looking for, bold prediction. I knew I'd find it. It happens there, to us. happens to us all. Uh, but there you go, Kirk Cousins. Now that he's swearing, everyone's got him pegged as like the best quarterback in the league. So Everyone's everyone's high on Kirk Cousins. Mm-hmm. Got to be. Do you know it's his birthday coming up? It is in just Tomorrow. a couple of days. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? 19. Wow. I saw that. You Basically knew that? birthday bros with him. Everyone. I'm yeah. telling you, everyone has birthdays. My dad's birthday is tomorrow. Really? Yeah. So your dad and Kirk Cousins. Dad and Kirk Cousins, and I believe I think Ryan Smith is tomorrow too. He's summer. He's he's. Who are you up. gonna wish happy birthday to first? Well, I think I mean your I dad or my Kirk. Dad. Or Kirk. You're gonna tweet it out. <laughs> tweet it out. Kirk Cousins happy Did you birthday. Just ask if I was yeah. gonna wish Kirk Cousins a happy birthday. I think you should. I'm gonna go DMs. Ahead, be high I'm you. gonna go ahead and say my dad will be okay. before Kirk Cousins mm-hmm. probably every year from here on out for the rest of my life. Okay. So I'll, I'll probably be tweeting at Kirk Cousins. Hey, happy birthday. You should, you should slide into his DMs and say, <laughs> yeah, happy okay, I don't know about sliding into the Come DMs, on. but he might respond. Hey, Maybe thanks, we get him Andy. on the show. Yeah, never know. Let's do it. It's a possibility. Get him up on the show on his birthday. He doesn't have anything going on. No, nothing important. Uh, we do see we have a caller calling in, but we got to take a break. We're behind one, so we're gonna take a break here. We'll get back uh, in just a bit, and then Mark in America will take your call on the other side. You're listening to the Insiders, presented by Proceed. Hear the herd. Hear Bison sixteen sixty. You remember back to the days when business was conducted at the coffee shop. The details were written on a napkin and the deal was concluded by a handshake. If you were the supplier, you probably filled out the check and the amount, and if the guy really trusted you, you filled in the check register. The check might even have been a counter check. Now you can do it in our iPad or phone or get confirmation that the transaction was concluded by clicking the right button on your email program. Memories. Need seed. Think proceed. Looking to add some light and brighten up the inside of your home? Maybe you have an outdoor project or you're looking to update in the garage. Then the team at JDP Electric should be your first and only phone call. JDP Electric makes the process easy. Their dedicated team of professionals can assist with any size project or idea you may have and even provide a few ideas they see that fit your budget as well. Don't mess with the electricity. Make sure to call in the pros. Call 701-232-1991 today to experience the JDP difference. Here on Bison 1660, we love delivering the latest Bison news, but we also love our studio home. Back inside our fantastic studio, you can't beat this one, folks. We love this place. 
Now our home has a new name, the Thurlson Ethanol Broadcast Center. Live shows and the latest coverage of NDSU Athletics. Director of Athletics Matt Larson joining us. Head coach Matt Entz with us in studio. It's all presented by Thurlson Ethanol, helping North Dakota lead the energy revolution. Join their growing team by visiting thurlsonethanol.com. You work hard to make your house a home, and at Onyx Exteriors, we strive to make the outside of your home as warm and inviting as the inside. I'm Blake. And I'm Ray, owners of Onyx Exteriors. We install the industry's top brands in seamless steel, wood, vinyl, specialty products, as well as gutters, windows, and doors. And all at a great price. We personally work with you from the estimate to the installation to guarantee your satisfaction. So whether it's a remodel or new construction, schedule a free estimate online at onyxnd.com. Here's your Red River Valley weather update on Bison 1660. A chance of showers likely throughout most of your day. A high of 78 and a 40% chance of some showers that could turn into thunderstorms. Tonight will cool down to 61 degrees and thunderstorms are likely around a 65% chance. This weather update brought to you by the Muscatel Collision Center. Now open in their huge new state-of-the-art facility that includes top-of-the-line paint booths. The Muscatel Collision Center, just off exit 1 in Moorhead. Family Fair helps you save money every day on your favorite brands and summertime picks. This week, super savings on Angus Pride T-Bone Steak Value Pack, only $7.97 a pound. Northwest Sweet Cherries are a hot price of $2.99 a pound. And this week, Open Acres Baby Peeled Carrots in 16-ounce bag are a hot, hot price of $0.49 with digital coupon. Family Fair offers you more ways to save throughout the store. Here for you, for all the Bison football coverage you can handle. These guys do an unbelievable job, and you want to know what's going on in Bison sports? You know, tune in to The Insiders. The Insiders on Bison 1660 and 92.7 FM. Welcome back into The Insiders, hour number one on Thursday. Welcome back. You can watch the show live on our Horse Cam. How are you guys doing? Horse Farming with Passion online at horse.com, H-O-R-S-C-H.com. And the Insiders today brought to you in part by Twin Peaks. If you're a fan of Twin Peaks, sign up for the E-Club to stay up to date on all things Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks uh, right here in Fargo. You can score some free stuff with that E-Club. Visit them online at TwinPeaksRestaurants.com. Eats, drinks, scenic views. Again, that's restaurants. At the S at the end of that one with TwinPeaksRestaurants.com. Let's jump on over to our Epic Companies hotline right now. Mark in America giving us a call. Mark, where are you at today and what do you want to talk about? Hey, Andy. Uh, just rolling out of Memphis right now. Oh, there you go. Just rolling out of Memphis instead of walking on Memphis. I got you. <laughs> exactly. Hey, uh, had a question for Kyle. Uh, and but first, want to congratulate him on uh, on his nuptials. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, and then number two, so it's actually uh, two other parts. Number two, I actually do have an opening in my in my league. Okay, what's the punishment and, for uh, the loser? That's what I really need to know. Well, we've got a couple teenagers in there, so we can't be too extreme. Okay, you don't do the IHOP thing where they go um, eat pancakes. <laughs> Well, I, I think my boy wouldn't mind that. But, <laughs> it's um, more of a reward. Hey, uh, Kyle, so uh, I don't know if you recall, uh, I'd say three, four years ago when you guys played at the Panthers, uh, I was the uh, gentleman down in the front with the flag after the game. Oh, yeah. And uh, you came over. So just so you can put a face with the name. Oh, I but remember here's you, Mark. My question. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, here's my question, and it stems from – after yesterday's show, of course, I flip over to a couple of podcasts that I listen to. The FCS has been trying to repeat what we've accomplished or what we've built here. And, of course, Bison fans understand that it all starts in the trenches. It's smart interior yep. construction so that the exterior, meaning the receivers, the running backs, the D-backs, the linebackers, all look good and it, or, you know make the make the plays that put the points on the board. Kyle, in your 11, 12 years of college and NFL, what do you think are a couple of reasons as to why, other than a couple of schools like James Madison and uh, Brookings Community College, that outside of them being actually 
being able to go toe to toe with us that the rest of the FCF isn't necessarily catching up. Is it personnel? Is it philosophy? Just wanted to kind of get your take on that, just from some, some other things I heard on other podcasts regarding college football and why certain teams aren't uh, catching up with gotcha. the best. Gotcha. Thanks, Mark. So, Appreciate the call. Thanks, guys. Yep. yep. Kyle, why aren't uh, teams catching up to NDSU in a faster manner? Well, I think there's a lot of factors. I don't know if I can get into all of them. Um, <clears throat> I would agree with Mark, though. I think, you know, Teams do try to copy the blueprint here, and well, why not, not? And not just not just from the X's and O's on the field, but the how how NDC recruits. I think you know going into the Twin Cities area, I think people have started to copy that. I think NDC kind of had a stranglehold as far as like at least from the FCS, like they were getting everyone from Minnesota, especially um, in my time. And I think they've so they've tried to copy recruiting, they've tried to copy how, what they do on the field. The thing I would point to, and this might not be the only reason, but it is hard to create a culture. A, a culture is something that you can't just write on a piece of paper and here it is. Like it's a feeling. It's a feeling when you step into the building. It's a feeling that you get when you're when you're working out, when you're training, when you just get into the community. And teams can try to emulate that, but it's it's not something you can just do overnight. And I I don't even know if I have the perfect answer on how you create that winning culture. But it's here. It's at NDSU. Everyone knows it. Everyone can feel it. Even the young guys that can come in in a couple weeks, days, a couple games, and they're like, okay, I understand it. It's not, And it's not always something that's easy to even verbalize and put into words. But we have it here at NDSU, and I think that's what everyone else is trying to chase is how do you create that culture? How do you get guys to buy in so easily and so well and to play like we do? I'm, I know so many times I would get compliments on how we played at NDSU, especially defensively and running after the ball and the effort that we played in. Well, how do you get that at other schools? I don't know. If I did know, I'd probably be a head coach somewhere else making a lot of money. Like you, you know? said, there's a lot of things, a lot of factors that go into it. And one of them is you're just going to have talent, and NDSU's just gotten more and more talent as the years have gone on, better in recruiting right. just because you win more, more recognition, you're going to get better talent. That's how it kind of goes. The thing I'll say about it, and again, this is an outsider's perspective of it, is they're, they're dedicated to it. Like... They're dedicated to investing in football. And it's not just the practices and going through it and becoming good and going through that, you know, I guess it's kind of a routine at this point, but from the top on down, look, there's a new practice facility going up. Not all schools have something like that. And if they do, it's not nearly what NDSU is building with the NODAC Insurance Football Performance Complex. It's you know paying your, your coaches more. It's funding the, the program better. It's bringing in more... Uh, more players on you know the walk-ons and different things. It's it's kind of really we say it's the haves and have-nots. It's being dedicated to building and investing in your football program. And NDSU has done that at an extremely high level. Some other schools have done that. JMU did that. SDSU to a very good extent does that as well. I think that's one of the reasons those two teams have been able to copy that blueprint. They also have smart coaches and smart football minds behind it. But there's other schools out there in the FCS that. Don't have the budget. Right. They don't have the money to do it. They're not willing to invest in the football program or in athletics in general. And so their football stadium suffers. So you don't have as much fan attendance. So you have a smaller venue. It's not as good of a program or a product out there. And they can't, they struggle to keep coaches. We see a lot of times at UNI. Not going to be criti- too critical on UNI, but they lose coaches all the time. You got to be able to keep your coaches and, and investing in the program is a big thing. Yeah. And the dedication and the budget and the fan attendance, like that's all part of it. But that all, goes into what I was talking about in creating this culture, this atmosphere around a football program that is not necessarily always something you can buy. You can throw a bunch of money at stuff, but if, if it doesn't yep, if it doesn't then it become, comes down to having the right people. The, and the right people and the right product mm-hmm. on the field. And when they've you know lost a head coach, quote unquote, it's someone internally that takes it over. They don't tend to go outside right. of uh, people that know NDSU and know what it takes to succeed here are the people that tend to lead the program. That'll do it for hour number one. We'll come back in hour number two. Hear from a senior safety, Dawson Weber, and also senior, senior defensive lineman, Spencer Wagey, in hour number two when we come back here on The Insiders.
QR code for lunch? Stop it! Yep, it's not just your favorite for happy hours and late night fun. Their lunch is delicious and they get you in and out quick. Stop it! Barcode for lunch? I love their pizza. Well, that's perfect. Monday through Friday from 11 to 2, get any 16-inch handmade pizza for half price with the purchase of two drinks. Stop it! Or grab one of their famous burgers. Stop it! All right, seriously, stop it with the stop it. Oh, you don't like that? Stop it! (laughs) Barcode across from Costco, just off Veterans. Jeremy here at Horse and Mapleton. Did you know that Horse manufactures premier planting, seeding, and tillage solutions right here in the FM area? We are proud to be a family-owned business based out of Germany and would love for you to join our team right here in Mapleton. We offer competitive pay, full benefits, and paid family time from Christmas to New Year's. Please visit Horsch.com to view our current openings. From everyone here at Horsch, we wish you a safe and successful farming season, and don't forget to kick back and enjoy the summer. When is the last time you went to the dentist? Has it been more than six months? Then it's time to make an appointment. My friends at About Smiles Dental are accepting new patients. Not only for you, but your entire family. Our family loves the team at About Smiles. And let's be honest, there's no better feeling than a clean and healthy smile. At About Smiles, their name says it all. Your smile is their top priority. It's easy to skip appointments, but the dentist isn't one you should put off. Make sure you're keeping up with your oral hygiene. Schedule your appointments now at About out smiles dental businesses should know the consolidated communications has the only data center in the fm area that is SOC 2 certified that means consolidated has tested reliable systems in place to protect your valuable data that's more important than ever with today's security concerns many business insurance companies require SOC certification at data storage facilities you should work with a local data center that is SOC 2 certified for scalable cost-effective data center solutions for your changing business needs go to consolidated.com slash data center join our team the club orange team you'll save money and make waxing a lifestyle i'm kim owner of waxing the city an exclusive facial and body waxing studio for men and women not only will you get silky smooth summer skin when you join club orange you'll get 20 percent off services each month and 10 percent off all products stop into your local waxing the city and see what club orange can do for you waxing the city on 13th avenue just west of target Let's go there. Sing the city. And it's booked. Wait, what if my flight gets canceled or the room is terrible? Ugh, what am I doing? Travel Travel always has specials on dream trips. They do corporate travel, honeymoons, everything. I'm booking with Travel Travel just to be safe. This week's Travel Travel hot deal of the week is Punta Cana. Fly from Minneapolis to Punta Cana and stay seven nights all inclusive at the Ryu Republica. Adults only, December 19th through the 26th for $13.59 per person. Call Travel Travel at 492 5000 or online at traveltravelgroup.com. KQWB, West Fargo, Fargo Moorhead, and KPFX, HD3 Kindred, Bison 1660. Powered by Gateway Chevrolet, Cadillac, Nissan, and Hyundai in Fargo. And here's what you need to know. Huge breaking NFL news. Multiple outlets are just reporting within the last few moments that the NFL and the Players Association have agreed to a settlement on an 11-game suspension and a $5 million fine for Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson. This means that Watson will be eligible to return in Week 13 on December 4th on the road against, would you believe, his former team the Houston Texans. Again, breaking news announced within the last few moments, multiple outlets reporting that the NFL and the Players Association have reached a settlement on an 11-game suspension and a $5 million fine of Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson. Pittsburgh Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin announcing today Mitch Trubisky will start in Saturday's preseason game against Jacksonville. I'm Isaac Lohenkron. Got the insiders. How you play today, from this moment on, is how you will be remembered. That's what living is. That's right. The six inches in front of your face. Bringing you what you need to know and a whole lot more. Topics you care about, guests you know, and the conversations you came to hear. The Insiders are presented by Proceed. Need seed? Think Proceed. Now, here are the Insiders. The Insiders. The Insiders. The Insiders. Insiders. The Insiders. Andy Rickoff and Bison great Kyle Emanuel. 
Hour number two of the program. It's a Thursday for you here on the Insiders on Bison 1660. Your home for all things NDSU. Hour number one of the program was brought to you by Barcode. Barcode in West Fargo is not just your favorite for happy hours and late night fun, because that is phenomenal over there at Barcode, but their lunch special is delicious and they can get you in quickly and get you out quickly as well. Try their lunch special. Uh, their lunch pizza special, Monday through Friday from 11 to 2 p.m. So going on right now, get any 16-inch handmade pizza for half price with the purchase of two drinks. Barco just south of Costco. Again, breaking news earlier in the show, Deshaun Watson, if you haven't already heard, uh, a settlement between the NFL and NFLPA. He'll be suspended 11 games and fined $5 million, plus he'll lose money on all the, ge- the game checks for those 11 games Cannot be around the facility, so I think he's out of practice basically from here on out. He'll zoom with them, send them stuff. He'll still be going through some stuff. It's more virtually, though, and I don't believe he's allowed to even play in the preseason games from here on out either. So uh, probably not going to see Deshaun Watson until week 13 when they happen, just happen to play at the Houston Texans, his former team and Kyle Emanuel's former team as well, and that'll be the first game he plays since he played with Kyle Emanuel. Look at all those uh, connections Look to this that. show, just like that. Well done. We're all six degrees of Kevin Bacon or something like that, right? Is that how it goes? That's the the movie, we're six degrees away from something. Yeah, six degrees six of people, separation. Six handshakes away from knowing just about everybody. Um, we have some uh, some other news. You have some Hero Sports attendance yeah. numbers that have been leaked so out there. Was, well, this was actually, I just realized this was actually tweeted out a while ago, but okay. it's making its rounds again. Um, Sam Herter tweeted this out, um, looking back at, uh, last season's FCS attendance rankings came out a while ago, but you might have missed them or you might have forgot them. So there's a couple noteworthy things I, I I saw here I wanted to mention. Jackson State actually ran away with the attendance numbers last year. Do you have a, a guess, Andy, on what they averaged? But Jackson State, Jackson averaged. State, number one by a large margin. Oh, well, if it's like, a large, not even. But close. you're emphasizing large. I'm going to say like fifty thousand. Close, forty two thousand. They okay. were number one. Montana was number two. James Madison that three. That doesn't surprise me. Montana State four. Southern University, five. Florida A&M, six. Seven was Jacksonville State. North Dakota State, all the way down to eight. Mm-hmm. Averaged 15,101. If you were wondering, South Dakota State, number 11 at 12,668. UND was actually on this list. I saw them 24, 9,600. Youngstown State was 17, 10,000. So, yeah, there you go. Some attendance numbers. And you slipped now, down a little I'll bit say 15,000. One of the things there – and. I think it's fair to say, yes, attendance numbers have been dipping at the Fargo Dome. One of the things that should improve that this year, we talked about yesterday. If you haven't heard, they're going to be selling beer and seltzers. There's That's alcohol right. sales at, at the Fargo Dome. And I know there's other things they're going to be doing for in-game experience and tailgate experience. to Make it a, make it a, a cool event. Make it something else that we can you know really all enjoy out there and, and make it even better than it already is. It's already pretty darn good. But the other thing you got to factor in, I believe at least the first four you mentioned, which were um, – Jacksonville State. And, Jackson State. Sorry, Jackson State. Montana. Montana. James Mon- Madison, JMU. Montana State. I don't know about Harrisonburg, um, but the other three for sure, I believe they hold more than the Fargo Dome. And for sure. Montana, Montana and Montana State with those two fan bases, I mean, they sell out everything there. And Remember their playoff game against SDSU for Montana State, it was standing room only and then some. People were right. Because they hadn't been that far in the playoffs in a long time. So. Well, and this did include playoffs, which yep. – Honestly, those were probably some of the least attended games for NDC. The number yep. might have been a little bit higher if you didn't include playoffs. Might have been. But, hey, there's your challenge to buy as a nation. Go out there, support the team, get you. We all want to be known as the best fan base, right? Well, you got, sometimes you got to prove it a little bit. The numbers don't lie. That's right. Even, you know, again, you might not be number one because never some of those get, stadiums hold more. Never going to get so. 42,000. Nope. Never going to get that. Not, <laughs> not going to get 24,000. Now, unless you take the roof off the Fargo Dome. That's right. Start putting some rafters up there. You can hang from the rafters literally. Uh, but, hey, let's get up there again. Let's let's go out and support this team. It's a great product. It's phenomenal. They've always said the one thing they ain't apologizing for is winning too much oh. or by winning by too many and points. Never, You should never do that. Mm-hmm. Never, never have and never will nope. apologize for that. But go out there, support this product, and there's going to be some cool things. I'm telling you. You don't want to miss this season. Going to be some really fun things at the Fargo Dome this year in terms of in-game entertainment. And, hey, North Carolina A&T, team you haven't seen, like, ever. Yeah, new so, team. New team. And Drake, haven't played them for, like, 60 years. Not saying Drake's necessarily a great team, but, hey, there's some new teams in there, some new blood inside the Fargo Dome, and you can be the uh, the difference in all of those games. Let's jump back to the uh, Epic Compi- Company's hotline quick and talk with another guy calling in that's a good friend of the show. But John in West Fargo giving us a call. How you doing today, sir? Hey, doing well. 
Thanks a lot for letting me on. Uh, number one, I don't like fantasy football. I'm with Kyle on this. I have been <laughs> in the league. It's just, I it, it taints who you're pulling for. It's hard to pull for one team. You, you don't want the Packers, but you chose somebody on the Packers on your team, your fantasy team. So That's I'm why really I stay away Kyle from them. Never drafted a Packer. Uh, <laughs> uh, number two, uh, Matt Larson. Here's a here's an assignment for him. Do whatever you can to get Montana and Montana State to consider being a part of the Missouri Valley. Somehow, that would be wonderful if those two would join. Uh, number three, culture. Um, this should be talked about a lot more. It's really unbelievable uh, what NDSU has started here. So I'd be interested to know from Kyle, you know, you passed a few SB, FBS schools on the way up to NDSU. What uh, what made you do that? What was it? And I'll hang up and listen. Thanks, guys. Thank you, John. John and West Fargo giving us a call. I'll let you answer the, the last question there if you'd like. Well, the the easy answer is uh, most of them didn't want me. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Believe a, it or not, you weren't a five-star? No. I was, uh, recruited? I had zero stars next to my name. Mm-hmm. Um, no, Nebraska was the only one power or yeah, power five conference school that I would have even considered. I would have been a walk-on, not even a preferred walk-on. Didn't know if I'd ever play. Didn't want to pay for school either. So that was, that was a factor. But yeah, I said this when I got recruited at the time. Uh, Nebraska also has a really good culture. Now, it hasn't been great lately, but as far as like the fan base in, in the town and the entire state backing it, uh, Nebraska has that. And probably, I would argue, better than anyone in the country. Even look at the, they still have a sellout streak and they haven't had a winning season in, I don't know, five years. So, I mean, so Nebraska has it. Regardless of what you think about the product on the field, like they have a good oh, atmosphere, yes, good culture, absolutely. good fan base. I felt that. On a smaller scale, obviously, but on a smaller scale, I felt that in Fargo. Even at the year they were three and eight, they were three and eight. The year I got recruited, I still felt it. It's just something about this place felt different. I said that earlier in the, one of the segments. It's sometimes hard to explain why. I don't have the perfect words why. You just get a good feeling about something, right? And I, I felt that when I came to Fargo. I felt that around this program, even in a losing year, something just felt different. And I think you know a lot of guys would say the same thing. They don't have the perfect way to describe it, but. You just understand that this this is important in this community. I wanted to go somewhere where I felt football mattered. I, I considered going to UNO. Good thing I didn't because they dropped football. But I went to a game there, and it's like no one – no offense to UNO football at the time, but, like, no one cared about them. They all cared about the Huskers. I didn't want to go somewhere like that. I wanted to go somewhere where it felt like football mattered. And NDSU was definitely a place where football mattered. And getting fan bases, make sure we keep it that way. That's right. Absolutely. Keep supporting this program, coming out, and, and making sure that people know that it matters here in this community. Who was the main coach that recruited you? A.J. Cooper, who became okay. my position coach. He mm-hmm. wasn't at the time because he yep. was recruited as a linebacker. But A.J. Cooper, yep. He's gotcha. at Washington State now. Because it's not always that way. Sometimes you get recruited by the wide receivers coach. And right. defense. This is how yeah. it is. They have, all have their states and their, their regions. Um, have you ever asked, asked them why they wanted you? Because NDSU does this all the time. Guy with zero stars, not recruited. Nobody else wanted him. Why does NDSU want him? Did you ever ask him, like, no. what do you see in me? What did you see in me? That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I, was a, I was a good high school athlete, but I, was, I mean, came from a program. We had one good year in football-wise. We, were, we went to the playoffs. We were kind of average in everything else that I played in. Um, it's not like a lot of people are, you know, jumping on a plane or a bus or a car or whatever to come to Skyler, Nebraska and recruit. It's not like it's a recruiting hotbed. So I don't know. I, I know. I think, you know, I, I think my high school coach at the time sent out some of my tape to just some random schools did it on his own i didn't even ask him to so that might have been one of the things i don't know maybe they caught a glimpse of it and said hey we gotta look at this kid but he recruited nebraska anyway so maybe he was just making his rounds and okay. i don't know i, I really don't know yeah we got to get him on we'll have him come on and, and say why do you remember why you uh, went after kyle emmanuel nobody else would you guys saw something and you did a I couple guess. schools nobody else no one would touch a couple you. not, with a not many ball. but a couple nobody would touch you uh, on the other one, uh, John mentioned you know Matt Larson's job is to get the Montana schools in the Valley. Uh, one, it's not Matt Larson's job. That would be Patty Viverito, the commissioner of the Valley's job. Right. Uh, and two, that's never going to happen. Uh, the Montana schools are not leaving the big sky. That is uh, where they are staying, not because they need to stay there. That, that's them. That is the Montana schools to a T. They will never leave the big yeah, sky unless they maybe want to go to the FBS. They are big sky yeah. for life. I should also mention, because he just walked by and he texted me, Cole Jerk was actually hosted me on my recruiting visit. So he wants to <laughs> he wants to take credit for why I'm here. Well yeah I think I came I, get it. I came in spite of him, not because of him. Yeah. We talked about winning in spite of people or what to him it didn't feel like it mattered I, really. I came to NDSU in spite of Cole Jerk being my host. <laughs> <laughs> he almost scared you off, but thankfully he didn't because now you're here with us 
on the radio. Would you look at that? Uh, we'll take a break uh, and then come back and get to uh, Dawson Weber, senior safety that sat down with Rob Hip. That conversation coming up here in just a little bit. Where the bison roam. Bison 1660. When it's time to find a realtor, word of mouth is important. And Todd Cattermas with Beyond Realty is a name Bison Nation says often. Todd has helped everyone from coaches and administrators to broadcasters and former players and their families buy homes in the FM area. So many in Bison Nation trust Todd to buy and sell their homes, and you can too. Call Todd Cattermas with Beyond Realty today or visit him in person at 4832 Amber Valley Parkway in Fargo. Todd is a proud partner and the preferred realtor of NDSU Athletics. Todd Cattermas with Beyond Realty, moving the herd one home at a time. What's cooler than heating your water with an electric water heater? Let me think about that. Saving money at the same time. Yeah, that is cool. With an electric water heater, you can cut your electricity rates in half with off-peak heating. It's efficient, too. And you can get up to $700 just for installing one. I like what I'm hearing. It's the smart and cool way to heat your water. Visit CassCountyElectric.com to learn more about saving with an electric water heater. With over 900 vehicles in stock, Corwin Auto has you covered. Looking for better fuel economy? We have it with hybrids and electric vehicles. Need more room for that growing family? We have it. Upgrade to a van, SUV, or crossover. Need more horsepower to work and play harder? We have the biggest selection of new and used trucks in the area. Get exactly what you are looking for and don't settle when you can shop over 900 vehicles on the lot and ready for immediate delivery. Corwin Auto has you covered. Shop online, CorwinAuto.com. Dakota Refrigeration has been helping the Bison succeed behind the scenes. From their training room to their dining room, from milk to medicine, from ice to ice cream, Dakota Refrigeration has been serving Minnesota, Montana, and the Dakotas for over four decades. Locally owned and operated since 1974, Dakota Refrigeration is a full-service source for your refrigeration, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and electrical needs. Dakota Refrigeration, located in Fargo, Bismarck, and Minot. Do you want fuller lips but still have that natural look? I'm Megan, one of the expert injectors at Wellness District. Patients that are new to fillers can get the perfect pout for $4.99. An experienced injector makes a world of difference. Put your trust in Wellness District. Dr. Burry has been handpicked by Allergan to be a national trainer for Botox and filler, and he has personally trained all Wellness District injectors. So get the perfect pout. Add volume and definition to your lips for only $4.99. Book today at FargoWellnessDistrict.com. The construction is almost done at the Gateway Clearance Center, and the construction sale is going strong. No negotiations necessary, and payments starting as low as $99 a month. That's right, payments starting at just $99 a month at the Gateway Clearance Center, with a great selection of clean used cars, trucks, and SUVs, and right now, every vehicle is sale priced. Enjoy extra discounts for the construction sale going on now at Gateway Clearance Center on South University Drive in Fargo or online at fmclearancecenter.com. Hail the Bison, right here, your home for NDSU sports. This is Bison 1660. Welcome back here to the Insiders. Andy Rickoff, Kyle Emanuel, Micah Bindi with you. You can watch our shows on our Horsch Cam, H O R S C H dot com, is the website for horse farming with passion and also inside our Theraldson Ethanol Broadcast Center. Theraldson Ethanol, one of the nation's largest ethanol facilities. You can join their growing team today by going online to theraldsonethanol.com. 175 million gallon per year ethanol plant located just west of Castleton. Well, we got a lot smarter inside the studio, as we always do, when uh, the fine folks at Vance Thompson Vision stop by. Doctors Brooke Messer, Nick Risbrut here with us right now. And, uh, again, got a whole lot smarter. Uh, the latest on LASIK, what's uh, anything change? Are we doing anything different with the eye, or is everything kind of basically the same? Well, LASIK is always updating and changing, okay. and we're um, you know, using the best technology to uh, prescribe the you know the the most specific LASIK to your individual eye. And um, so we're always changing. There you go. Always changing. I love that. technology, we have to have it. Kind of like yep. the driver comes out, I have to. I want it. <laughs> I want it. Let's maybe. see. 30 seconds in the first golf <laughs> reference. Yeah. <laughs> the record for us, Kyle. I, I'm, not, I'm not mad it about it. It wasn't you. 
It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't I, was, me. I was checking Tom Hoagie, seeing where he's at in the BMW Championship. So I, I had golf in my mind. I apologize. Where's he at? Spec ties. Where's he at? Uh, one under through five. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well done, Tom. There That's we awesome. Go. Yeah, so the latest on LASIK. Let's go back to that. I, guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, LASIK is a life changer. We've, we've said this before. I've had the surgery, and you know, we've gotten it done, and my life completely changed almost four years ago at this – actually, a little over four years ago now at this point. You guys, the technology is always changing, as you both just said, and you, you guys are on the cutting edge, always the latest stuff there. Do you have any other uh, studies coming up, anything new that uh, you want let to our, let our listeners know about? Uh, we do have a LASIK study coming up. Yep. Um, it's not live yet, so we, um, you know, we're not actively enrolling. However, if you wanted to reach out and just give the clinic a call and say, "Hey, can I put my name on that list for the LASIK study?" Um, I think you get some reimbursement for participating. So okay, it might there you be go. Beneficial yeah. for many. Yeah, yeah, and you guys can you can always go online or schedule an appointment for a free consultation just to see if you're even a candidate for LASIK, right, Nick? Yes, absolutely. You know, if you're interested in LASIK, uh, refractive surgery, we're talking a lot about LASIK, but that's mm -hmm. one of the many uh, refractive surgeries we, we perform at Vance Thompson Vision. But yeah, if you're interested in it, give us a call, schedule yourself for a free consultation. And, you know, speaking of research, we, we, we do love and we do perform a lot of research at Vance Thompson Vision, and that's what helps us stay on top of the most recent technologies. And it gets, you know, lets us doctors firsthand, you know, see, you know, the new devices, new lasers coming out, which makes it fun for us and giving our patients great results at the same time. Yeah, and it's not just LASIK that we do research on, you know, glaucoma, cornea, cataract. We do a lot of research on many things, refractive surgery and, and ocular disease. So you can always reach out and ask too, if you have a, a condition that you're curious about and wondering if there's anything new that could help um, manage your condition better. What are the, I guess, the parameters or the, 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 the guidelines to qualify to be a good candidate mm -hmm. for LASIK? Mm -hmm. So uh, first thing we look at, you know, is the amount of nearsightedness, the amount of astigmatism patient, the patient has, and, and that kind of, you know, the large, the more near side you are, the more laser you get to receive. And so one uh, important parameter to look at is corneal thickness. And so when it comes to LASIK, there's multiple things we look at, but the first question we ask ourselves is, Hey, is this safe? And if it's not safe or there's a little bit of a question mark, you know, then we start talking about other technologies that we can use to help patients, you know, achieve good vision without glasses or contacts. Again, uh, the doctors of uh, Vance Thompson Vision in here with us. You guys can go online and, and schedule a free consultation today or also you know, go there and, and schedule an you know, extra LASIK appointment as well to get the, uh, the, the procedure done once you've had the consultation. I know you guys have said in the past mid-20s, Brooke, is usually best time when your mm -hmm. vision's kind of stopped changing for the most part. Yeah, most people's vision has stabilized in that early mid twenties, and so I think you know, end of college or right after college is a great time to consider um, to consider LASIK and enjoy it for the maximum amount of time. You know, over the course. But if of you're your 31 life. and you're in your younger 30s, like Kyle Manley just turned earlier this week, you can still have it done, right? Still Absolutely, great time. Great Kyle. time. I, I wanted to ask you because because my wife, my now wife, is is yeah, congratulations yes, by the thank way. You. She has uh, talked about getting LASIK before, but she. I don't know if someone told her this. She looked it up. She could be completely made up. She said pregnancy can affect your vision, so people suggest that you get LASIK after you're done having kids. Correct? Incorrect? Uh, Kyle, your wife is an attorney, so if you've learned <laughs> things now, uh, she'll always She's be right. right. Yeah. She is also right on this. Okay. Yeah, it's not that you have to wait until you're totally done having kids, but you want to you know, not be pregnant and then a certain period of time after. So there are moms who do it in between kids, um, gotcha. so you don't have to wait, you know. So I can tell her that all the her, child years. Yeah. Her, 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 uh, her thoughts on this were confirmed there you by go, right. two actual doctors. <laughs> she was correct. There you go. Great question. We learned asked. something new. I had there no idea go. about Kyle coming with the great questions. By the way, he pointed out to me uh, the whole marriage thing. What's on your hand today? Come on, man. Okay, I won't say. <laughs> you I won't had to say. point it out. I, I forgot. Say. Okay, he forgot it. He totally forgot. Forgot it. my wedding ring. It's, it's in okay. your golf bag. Yeah. No, it's it's <laughs> right there on the bathroom counter. I just forgot to put People it are seen on the horse cam the whole time. You know. I'm hiding it. Oh, you're hiding yeah. it. Doing a really good job she of that. She wouldn't even have known. She wouldn't. She probably still doesn't know. Fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, here with uh, the fine folks of Vance Thompson Vision in with us. Again, the website, VanceThompsonVision.com. No place you can go that's better than Vance Thompson Vision and no substitute for the time, technology, and experience their team provides. What kind of training do you guys go through? I've kind of wondered that, too, the last couple times we've had you in. Is it? You go to like a big convention somewhere? Is there yearly training? What do you guys oh. do in terms of actually training yourselves for the latest technology and the latest stuff with the procedure? Yeah, so I mean, optometry, it starts, you know, four years of undergrad, four years of optometry school. And then, um, yeah, uh, we have continuing educations we have to take every single year, hit so many hours. 
Um, more fun though on training, we uh, every year in Fargo we give a big old educational symposium coming up here in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Where we will be educating you know local doctors on hmm. on how we perform things over at Vance Thompson Vision. Where is that at? The, at the Delta. Delta. There you go. Yeah. And as we get new technology too, the the companies that build the technology will come in and do more specific training on site too. Gotcha. Yeah. People always people have asked me, oh, there's a laser. If I move, it's going to affect me. It's going to hurt me. Or and I tell them, no, it's not going to. One, mm-hmm. you know, I've had it done. It didn't hurt me at all. And I moved just a little bit. Uh, but also, the, like you guys have said, the laser is pretty well, uh, you know, guided, and it's not going to uh, to go off course. And if you move too much, it just kind of shuts off. Correct. You know, yeah, I mean, surgery around the eyes, everybody gets anxious. You know, companies that yeah. make these lasers take that into consideration. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we hold the eye open for you. The eye is completely numb. You're very comfortable. The laser will track your pupil movement should you move a little bit. Yep. And you're correct. If you move too much, the laser shuts off. So, um, easy, yeah. easy, e- easy procedure for you, Andy? Oh, extremely easy. I was okay. in and out in about five minutes, and my vision yep. was awful. Yeah. It was yeah. terrible. People they said it was going to be more of a delicate procedure. I'm like... Didn't seem like it, yeah. so you guys were just fine with it. I'd say any any patient coming in a little anxious about LASIK or nervous before this. Anyone says they're not, they're probably they're probably lying. Uh, we take that into account. We'll take care of them over there. Yeah, and if you're nervous, go in and talk to the doctors. These two know what they're doing. Everybody else there, you know, they'll they'll calm the fears if you have any of those. And like I said five minutes. I was in out later that day. I was seeing fine. It was phenomenal. Vision completely changed. Don't have to bring contacts with me. Don't have to bring the glasses with me. I was a student at NDSU. I walked out of a building once. And my glasses flew off my face because the wind here is terrible. And f- into the middle of the street, I thought I lost them. Somehow no car ran them over, and I just walked out in the middle of the road, hands up, picked them up, and then walked mm-hmm. through the street. Yeah. Don't have to do that anymore. A question, a question we get is, you know, yeah, what can I do the day after LASIK? So, Andy, what did you do the day after your LASIK? The day after LASIK, I came here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't take an extra day off because I could see fine that night. Like, I, I had thoughts. I had told Jeff and other people here, like, I, know, I might need tomorrow we'll off or something goes. like that. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. But I woke up and I was like, yeah, feeling completely, absolutely fine. I went to the gym, yep. worked nice. out, went for a run, came here, started a p- computer screen. You know, I made sure to, I had you know, drops I had to put in and different mm-hmm. things like that to make sure it, they stayed or didn't get dry, stayed mm-hmm. moisturized or hydrated, whatever you guys, whatever term you guys <laughs> use. That's way smarter than what I just said. Uh, but I was fine the very next day. Yeah, yeah, most people drive themselves to their one day post-op exam. I did. Yep. Drove on in, and then somebody else came and picked me up afterwards. So that's how it went. Yeah. The yeah. day, the day after your appointment. Yes, did correct. You dri- did you drive yourself? Yeah. Oh yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, I was driving myself around that very day after. I remember texting uh, Doctor Greenwood and sure. saying, "Hey, can I watch a movie tonight?" And he's like, "Take it kind of easy if it starts, you know, getting dry or any sensitivity. But if you're feeling fine, go for it." And I was like, "Okay, sweet." The very night after having that surgery, that's how quick it is, and it's a, a great procedure there at Vance Thompson Vision. Before we let you guys go. We've already brought up golf a couple of times. Uh, Kyle says you got uh, a little business venture uh, in the backyard <laughs> with some golf Give balls. Give yourself a free promo over there, Rose. There you yeah, go. Yeah, you know, if you're ever playing Rose Creek and you're out of golf balls on hole five, there's a vending machine there for you. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love that. I bought one there. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I think I got a noodle, though. Well, like you know, a, you those know, are great. You it, it makes it fun. You never yeah, know what fun. you're going to you get. Don't know what you, you might get a Pro V1. You might get a noodle. My right? brother got a pink one yesterday. Yeah. Just so you fun just for all ages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all the golf balls that are hidden to your yard, basically. Yeah, you just find them and put them in. That's Giving awesome. Giving them back. Uh, they're on what hole? Hole five. Hole five, Rose Creek, with uh, Dr. Nick Risbrut, uh, Broke Master as well, in here with us, Vance Thompson Vision. Again, the website, one more time, VanceThompsonVision.com. Thanks for coming in here, guys. Thanks. Thank you. We'll take a break. We'll come back with uh, Senior Safety Dawson Weber next year on The Insiders, brought to you by Proceed. You're listening to The Insiders on your home for NDSU sports. Bison 1660. Remember checking the markets back in the day? If you go way back, they moved about a nickel a year. It was up a penny, the word spread through party lines, and everybody revved up their single axes with no hoist and motored to town. Then came the 70s with a Russian grain deal, tandems and limit moves on the grains, 30 cents beans. The radio was just starting to have closes and sometimes at 6 o'clock news had markets. Nowadays almost everyone has semis, and you have text alerts from your favorite market analysis. Memories. Need seed, think proceed. 
Hi, this is Chris with Express Employment Professionals. The annual sugar beet harvest is here, and we are now in the process of hiring over 1,300 people, and you could harvest yourself up to $3,200 in just two short weeks. Positions are filling fast, so pile on and call today, 888-791-6738. Express Employment Professionals. The annual sugar beet harvest is here, and we are now in the process of hiring over 1,300 people, and you could harvest yourself up to $3,200 in just two short weeks. Positions are filling fast, so pile on and call today, 888-791-6738. When you're making decisions about your ag operation finances, you need access to the experts. This is Scott Zalandic with Cornerstone Bank. Whether you're just starting your operation or looking to grow, we're here to talk you through those financial decisions. We're the kind of people who get to know you and genuinely appreciate your needs. If you're looking for a bank that's been specializing in ag banking for generations, come see us at Cornerstone Bank. Cornerstone Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. When it's time to find a realtor, word of mouth is important. And Todd Catermas with Beyond Realty is a name buys the nation, says often. Todd has helped everyone from coaches and administrators to broadcasters and former players and their families buy homes in the FM area. So many in buys the nation trust Todd to buy and sell their homes, and you can too. Call Todd Catermas with Beyond Realty today or visit him in person at 4832 Amber Valley Parkway in Fargo. Todd is a proud partner and the preferred realtor of NDSU Athletics. Todd Catermas with Beyond Realty, moving the herd one home at a time. Hi, it's Kelly, and I want to tell you about my great experience with Valley Service Mechanical. They were polite and very easy to deal with. They were knowledgeable and helped me understand every step of the process, from the initial discussion of purchase options to the installation. It was a top-notch experience. If you ever want to work with professionals, I would strongly recommend Valley Service Mechanical. When your heating and cooling needs help and your plumbing is on the fritz, call Valley Service Mechanical, 701-293-5701. Online at valleyservice.net. Here's your Red River Valley weather update on Bison 1660. A chance of showers likely throughout most of your day, a high of 78 and a 40% chance of some showers that could turn into thunderstorms. Tonight will cool down to 61 degrees and thunderstorms are likely around a 65% chance. This weather update brought to you by the Muscatel Collision Center, now open in their huge new state-of-the-art facility that includes top-of-the-line paint booths. The Muscatel Collision Center, just off exit 1 in Moorhead. Two hours of sports talk every weekday, 11 to 1. Well, well, oh my gracious. Now, let's get back to the insiders. Always great when the doctors come in. Vance Thompson Vision doing a great job, and I always appreciate their, their time very much here on the show. By the way, this uh, hour on a Thursday, the second hour, as always, for years and years, the whole time I've been here at least, second hour on a Thursday on the Insiders has been brought to you by Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home. Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home proudly supports the Bison and is dedicated to helping families look to the future with hope. And remember what you do today shapes your memories for tomorrow. Enjoy the Bison experience and live life to the fullest. Go Bison from Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home. Okay, let's get to it. I've teased it enough times. How about the, the conversation between Rob Hip and senior safety Dawson Weber? Hey, Bison Nation, Rob Hip here with six-year super seniors. We're coining it now, Dawson Weber, the senior safety. Dawson, so much success. I've mentioned that throughout every interview, so much history behind this program. You've been here since 2017. Now in that sixth year, just talk a little bit about what you've seen since 2017 and what's inspired you just to keep going, man, and pushing hard. Yeah, the, um, the passion. Rob, I appreciate you having me, first off. And just the passion that is in the air like around this facility from the coaches, the strength staff, the academic staff, the professors who are pro in football, from my teammates from 2017 all the way through now, everybody who walks these halls just has an extreme amount of passion like for the game of football, passion to win, and it's selfless. And that's a big thing here is, is people have selfless character. One of our things here is to always put the team first, and I think that's a huge credit to our success is not playing for yourself but playing for the guy next to you. Talking to Dawson Weber here, six years senior. Say you, you, you go back to you've seen so much success with the national championships and you get one, then you get another one, you get another one. For you in a very unique position, getting to experience all of that as a player, what has that meant to you and what just gets you to drive for the next one? Uh, it means everything. I came here with a goal in my mind to win five national championships and with the COVID year granting me an extra year of eligibility, that goal is still on the table and 
from um, the first national championship in, uh, in 2017, I was a red shirt until now, which being a huge factor on defense is the same work is being put in from scout players all the way to starters and everybody owns their role like to the fullest around this facility and around our team and I think that's also has been very like beneficial in our success is understanding your role like, in the moment that you're here and building upon your role and expanding your role and then reaching like for that starting role that national championship goal and just creating that edge that we have each and every year talking to Dawson Weber senior safety Dawson you you also had to go through the COVID experience I don't like to bring that up too much anymore but just with the success you've had in this program and your leadership you're a veteran on this team what was going through that like and how do you feel that this team came out of that stronger talk a little bit about going through that situation yeah COVID was definitely hard on us just because you come all the way up here for, like for football and you see all the success and to have it be taken away from you in such a short time and preparing all summer fall for that season and it not happening it definitely left a salty taste like in our mouth but post COVID we came back the following fall and we dominated and we stuck to the script we stuck to the tradition that we know and being on defense and Cole Green just flying around and playing together playing hard playing fast and trusting each other and gaining confidence from your peers from your coaches and everybody just putting their best foot forward each and every day you step in the facility final football question heading into this season what are some areas that you think not any specific player not even yourself but just as the safeties in general with so much depth on the team what are some areas that you think needs improvement in that part of the game yeah we're always looking for room to improve if you're satisfied with where you're at that's the wrong mindset to have and we believe that as a safety unit and as a back half and just growing on our depth I think this season coming up we'll have the most depth in the back half that we had in a while guys finding roles in, in, in other situations because of the depth that we have in the back half and it just makes practice meetings that much more fun and enjoyable and competitive in a good way because each person is fighting for a spot on this team is fighting for a spot in the back half and nothing's guaranteed and nothing's granted and I, I think that's why it pushes us to be our best like each and every day I think takeaways is definitely an emphasis for us four in the back half specifically this season coming up and we know we gotta lead the country in takeaways in, in those interceptions when the ball is in the year it's gotta be our ball 100% of the time you know 80-20 it has to be all ours and I think with fall camp and honing in on the details and perfecting our craft working on our footwork our ball out breaks our reads in run fits and pass fits and, and all that is increasing every day it's only day six of camp so still a, plenty of time to improve and we will improve and come game one we'll be ready to go little question outside of football i'm from texas saw a little bit of snow you're from sacramento probably never saw snow yeah. before you got here <laughs> what's that been like for you man what's been what's been just the biggest change from sacramento california here to north dakota uh yeah definitely the weather that's that's definitely a big change that i saw in my first couple seasons being it's my sixth year people on the team start to call me north dakota grown now or <laughs> i'm from north dakota now that i've been around here around the block for a while but i just think this place has been the best experience for me, my situation, my family, and it's been truly an amazing experience thus far. How much has Bison Nation meant to you? The fan base is so incredible here. What does that mean to you as a student athlete? Man, Bison Nation it brings it every day of every single year. Off season, in season, from being loud, everybody hears all 20,000 on game days, screaming our names. We appreciate that more than words words can say. And and the thing I'm, I'm most appreciative of about Bison Nation is the off season and the volunteer work that we do, like the community service, the youth camps, the youth groups that we're involved in, um, the homeless shelters that we're involved in. It's just it's it's super it's super rewarding seeing all these people of less like fortune be blessed final last question cheetos or doritos man doritos 100 <laughs> percent. doritos <laughs> all right that's dawson weber looking forward to seeing you on the field young man this season going to be another exciting season of bison football good to see you man i appreciate you having me on the show rob appreciate it cheetos or doritos kyle 
Doritos all day. Doritos all day. You yeah. and Dawson Weber the same way on that one. Yep. All. I mean, what I, flavor? Uh, I mean the the classic ones like Nacho Cheese Cool Ranch, right? So mm-hmm. I mean, either of those probably. Either of them. I'm okay. good with either one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not too picky on those. Either. No. It, it's a Dorito. Come on. Have like, you done the thing good. with like Doritos and then you put like shredded cheese on them, make them almost nachos? Uh, no, I haven't done that. I put them on my sandwich before. You just kind of crum- yep. get a little oh, yeah. crunch in your sandwich. Yeah, I've done that. Mm-hmm. But I haven't done the nacho cheese thing. Have you done the uh, like uh, Doritos taco thing? Oh, at Taco Bell? Mm-hmm. Or no? I was trying not to give him a free mention, but yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think I have. I don't think I have. They're pretty good. I like them. Not too bad. Um, what if they had a pumpkin spice Dorito? Yeah, I'd try it. Give it a shot. <laughs> have you not figured that out about yeah. me yet? Yeah, I'll yeah. try it. Sure. I'll try it. Why not? Sounds weird. Try anything at least I'll once. Yeah. yeah. Can't Fair be enough. bad. It's a Dorito. Yeah. Dawson Weber, though, is going to play a big role on that defense. And obviously, he's you know a senior guy. He's a guy that's been around. When you were in your last year, he's going through this right now. Last fall camp, last everything. Did you, did you notice any of those things early on in your senior year? Last this, last that type of yeah, stuff? Yeah, for sure. I, I thought about it. I thought about it all the way back to when we went into training in the winter. And, I, and you know, I've talked about this a lot, but – it just it was such a different time for us at, because we were losing so many seniors and losing the coaching staff and then there wasn't really a lot of expectations we had a new head coach in 2014 and yeah i think i took that upon myself and i think all the seniors in that class did as well I was like yeah this is our last go around and let's make it special and so yeah you think about that for sure like this is everything is the last right it's the last home opener it's the last you know first away you know everything's mm-hmm. it's the last time especially when you've been around for that long it's it's a little bit weird yeah well, there's quite a few guys that are going through that this year. Tutsi and Weber are for sure. You know, a couple of them that are doing that. You think about Spencer Wagey, who we'll hear from later on this week as well. So a lot of uh, players on this year's team going through all of that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll take a break here on the show. We'll come back, and we'll hear from uh, Kyle Emanuel again because he's got some questions. we got some bison trivia he has come up with that he wants to throw my way if I don't answer him. We'll let Micah also jump in on it. We'll this. let Micah jump in on it yep. as well. If we can't answer it, then that's a chance – for a fan to possibly answer a question and, and win a prize. So uh, call us up, 701-476-1660. Call now. Get in line. If we can't answer it, then it's a chance for a fan to answer the question and uh, maybe you win a prize from uh, our prize closet here at Bison 1660. Kyle's Trivia when we come back. This is the Insiders on your home for NDSU sports. Bison 1660. When it comes to shopping for your kiddos, you have to check out Tootsie's Children's Boutique. Whether you need outfits for daycare, family pictures, or loungewear, Tootsie's has everything you need for your little miss or little man sizes preemie to seven. I love shopping for my kiddos at Tootsie's, and I know you will too. With fall right around the corner, make sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram to see all their new arrivals. Shop in store at the shops at Blue 32 or online at TootsiesFargo.com. Tootsie's Children's Boutique, where style is born. Tired of your vehicle sounding like this? Want it to sound like this? Or this? The exhaust experts at Bruns Automotive can help you. From exhaust, oil changes, brakes, alignments, and more, there's nothing the ASC certified technicians at Bruns Automotive can handle. With three generations of automotive experience, you can trust Bruns to get the job done right. Check them out on Facebook or at BrunsAutomotive.com. This summer, I'm planning to make memories for a lifetime. Sightseeing, family adventures, long weekends, and the activities I love most. I know my memories will be clear because my vision is vivid thanks to LASIK from Vance Thompson Vision. All the summer activities I love are better with LASIK because I'm free to enjoy life and see the bright, beautiful colors. To make this your best summer yet, visit VanceThompsonVision.com to set up your free LASIK consultation. Don't let your profits get stuck in your truck. Let it slide with Super Slide. Super Slide is a plastic, non-stick, self-lubricating and seamless liner that eliminates waste in your truck or on your trailer. Super Slide is available in various grades, widths, and thicknesses. And Horn Plastics can have you in and out in no time. Call today to get your installation scheduled so you can get every last dime out of your haul with Super Slide from Horn Plastics, created and perfected for every job. Visit hornplastics.com for more information. You work hard to make your house a home, and at Onyx Exteriors, we strive to make the outside of your home as warm and inviting as the inside. I'm Blake. And I'm Ray, owners of Onyx Exteriors. We install the industry's top brands in seamless steel, wood, vinyl, specialty products, as well as gutters, windows, and doors. And all at a great price. 
We personally work with you from the estimate to the installation to guarantee your satisfaction. So whether it's a remodel or new construction, schedule a free estimate online at onyxnd.com. No one does happy hour like Twin Peaks. Whatever your preference, we have everything from tequila cocktails and extensive bourbon selection to top shelf spirits and cocktails served over ice balls. Local craft beers and handcrafted whiskey cocktails round out an adventurous drink menu second to none. And don't forget about our 29 degree man sized drafts. Twin Peaks, eats, drinks, scenic views. Missed portions of today's show? Go to bison1660.com to listen to the podcast or find us on Facebook and Twitter at Bison1660. Welcome back on in. Andy Rickoff, Kyle Emanuel. It's the Insiders for you. Kyle with us tomorrow as well. Looking forward to that. Yes, you stops by tomorrow. Well, the head coach, Matt Entz, will be on the show right around noon. A little bit after that, as practice gets done at noon, he walks off. We call him, he calls us, something like that. And then we have the head coach on. We found out the latest stuff. I don't have any anything for him yet because, like, last week we had you stuff had from the week before. Up, yeah. We had it all dialed up. But we ask him some uh, some different questions here this week after three weeks of fall camp. Uh, the show today brought to you in part by Twin Peaks. If you're a fan of Twin Peaks, sign up for the E-Club to stay up to date on all things Twin Peaks and to score free stuff. Visit TwinPeaksRestaurants.com to learn more. Eats, drinks, scenic views at Twin Peaks. Okay, Mike Abendi, the uh, commissioner of all things game shows and everything back there behind the board. Give us some football bed music. I love it. Kyle Emanuel's got some questions, some trivia questions on NDSU football. Who is the, the coach at Shanley that wanted you to do this? Priz? Chris. Priz is on. I know. I don't know how to, that guy. I don't know how to pronounce Priz's last name. He knows I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Chris Priz. Have an easier Priz. to pronounce last name. We'll pronounce it more. Rickoff's so, difficult for people to pronounce, too. Yeah. That's shout out to fault. Priz. Here we go. But he wanted Bison trivia. So we got Bison trivia. Kyle's got five questions. Me and Mike have a chance to answer. If we can't answer it or get it wrong, because there's one multiple choice in there. Uh, we'll go to the phone line. So we have a few people calling in right now. You can call in and get in line if you'd like. 701-476-1660. Kyle, question number one. All right, question number one is a two-parter, but the second question is actually a little bit of a hint. So here we go. Who was a punter looking for a name who ran the infamous fake in the 2011 National Championship game? And what position did he play prior to moving to punter? Prior to moving to punter. So two-part question. Yeah. This one. In what year? 2011. 2011. Micah, you love punters. You're all things punters back there. We were talking about punters before, and we we dropped his name. We dropped the name. You know it, right? No, I can't think of the name right now because we Matt dropped the Voigt- name before. Matt Voigtenlander. Voigt- Correct. Yes, but and I don't know the position. position. Def- running back. Correct. Okay. Point for Micah's Micah. Micah's great. Micah's phenomenal. He was the emergency See? punter back when he was a running back, too. Gosh, this guy knows everything. See? Emergency punter. He was the emer- that's correct. He was the emergency punter. So maybe feel bad for the guys on the phone. I was going to say, our right callers now. aren't going to get anything. Maybe we'll give them the last one if you guys get all four right. Does that sound good? Okay, fair enough. Uh, okay, so this one, I'll just ask it. If you need, I, I did come up with three options, multiple choice. If you need them, I will say them. If not, you could just answer it right off the bat. Okay, okay so we fair. all know Trey Lance played one year at NDSU, right? 2019. But he actually Is that the they, question? No. Yes. Okay. He actually debuted in 2018 as a redshirt, right? Mm-hmm. Because you can do that. So, the question is, what team did Trey Lance debut against in 2018? 2018 would have been early on in the season. No Googling. No Googling. I have a computer up, but it's not, I'm not on anything. Do you want the options? I do have options because I figure this is kind of hard. No, just let's try and think through it a little bit before you give it. Because I think when I get the options, I'll probably have a good, a pretty good idea. I have a good um, guess. But I, you, you get to answer first. You're the host. I'm the, I'm the host. Thank you for telling me. Um, 2018. There's a game early on in the year. Okay, yeah, give me give me a couple of the options here. Okay, so the options are South Dakota, Cal Poly, or North Alabama. Was he the first backup, like the primary backup that year? I would think he was behind Easton. I'll say North Alabama. That sounds, well. Was Final it? answer? Yeah, I'll, go, I'll say North Alabama. Correct. North oh, Alabama yeah. is correct. Okay. 2018. He also played against go. South Dakota. I, I, I knew he did, yeah. but obviously that's a conference game. Okay, so. I had to make sure he was the actual backup, yeah. not like the third string guy. Okay, so this one, I feel like this one's easy. I had to throw in like an easier one, but okay. like if it might catch you off guard, but it's fairly easy. Who has more national championships, Craig Bull or Chris Kleiman? 
Oh, okay. I mean, we got to do the math. Don't take too long. Chris would have had, you know, probably four of them. Well, yeah, I mean, are you with me on this one, Mike? Yeah, it's got to be Chris, I, I didn't right? have to think. Yeah, okay. I'm just he making just sure. It. Math is just one, not my strong suit, so I'm making sure I do the math correctly. I, yeah, I was Kleiman. obviously a part of them, and I was even like, wait, Kleiman had, yeah, Kleiman had four. I mm-hmm. mean, Chris Kleiman had four, so the I answer is right. Chris Kleiman with four. Craig Bull had three. Matt Ents with two. So there we go. As of now. As of now. Dun, dun, okay. Dun. Next one. Okay. This is three? No, this, this is, is four. This is four. This is four. So you guys are doing well. Okay. I didn't want to make it too hard. I didn't want to make Andy feel bad, you know? Okay. What was the closest national championship game by score difference? And who was the opponent? Score and I'm talking uh, Division One here. So from 2011 till now. Uh, we're, not going, we're not going all the way back. I, already, I mean, 2019 I, was pretty close to JMU. I already know it. Micah knows these all. I already he know does. it. So we're going to give the callers. Um, we give the callers. I think, I think we should get Brandon in. 2016 would have been fairly close that year, too. Should we just let Brandon in since yeah, he's been holding? Yeah, let's see. Just giving him a little minutes. bit of insight here. So let's Bring go Brandon to the call. On. a tougher we'll one. Brandon is our, our first caller. Uh, Brandon, you were on the show. Did, did you hear the question from Kyle I, Emanuel? I did. Okay. Do you have a, a guess for us? I do. It it's, uh, was the conference game, I believe. Uh, when we played, oh dang it, was it? Uh, you're, you're on the right track. Correct. There you go. That well done, correct. Brandon. Congratulations. You know your buys in trivia. But both time, I know something. <laughs> <laughs> we know at least something. Uh, would, would you like an NDSU yard sign? I would love one. Okay. Well, Brandon, we'll put you on hold. We'll get your info with Micah, and we'll we'll have a yard sign put aside for you. How's that sound? Awesome. Thanks for calling in. There we go. Well done, Brandon. That is uh, 2014, trivia. my senior year. Oh, we got one more. Oh, okay. We got one more. We that was only more. four, sorry. 2019, 29 to 7. Second was uh, 2017, James Madison, 17 to 13. Okay, last one. This one could be hard, could also be very easy. What was the name of the conference NDSU was in before the Missouri Valley and the Great West? So they were in the Great West for oh. a little bit when they went in. Hint, they were in this conference for, according to my Wikipedia search here, they were in this conference for 82 years, 1921 to 2003. What was the name of the conference? Yeah, you're going way back there. This is something where, no, like, I mean, 2003. I so, yeah, oh, 20 okay. years, 19 yeah. years. I, pre, Pre-D1. pre The pre-D1. Yeah, this and Micah, was, you got this one. You, yeah, you, you guys I, I have been it. around this for a long I, time. I, I know it. Do you want to yeah. let Jonas take I'm, this I'm, one? I'm you want to let, let Jonas, Jonas take it? We can okay. let Jonas take it. I won't it. give any more any of these hints. We'll go to the phone lines. What's oh, so this one? Uh, Jonas giving us a call. I'm guessing this is Jonas and Moorhead. This is him. There you go. How you doing, Jonas? Doing good, guys. Did you uh, hear the question from Kyle Emanuel? Loud and clear. Okay. Do you have a uh, a guess for us on this one? I well, it's not a guess. It, it, it's a definite answer. <laughs> okay. Well, tell it, us the definite answer then, sir. It it is the North Central Conference. Correct. There you go. There Crowd you go. cheer sound effect. Woo! Well done. Way to go, Jonas. Nice job, sir. Thank you. I'm guessing you kind of already have an NDSU yard sign? I, I yeah, I do. So I, I was going to say, if you want to give it to the next caller ahead of me, by by all means, do so. Okay. Appreciate that, Jonas. Thank you for doing so. Kind gesture from you, as always. Are uh, you ready for another yep. football season here? Uh, well, well, of course. Are we going to be <laughs> hearing from you on the post-game show after the Arizona game when post-game starts at about 1 a.m.? I don't, I don't know about post game. Ah, but come on, <laughs> Jonas. What are you doing? Definitely the coach's show. But, <laughs> hey, if Kyle is involved, then, yes, I, I will be. I'll, I'll call in then. Oh, there we go. Trying to put pressure on Kyle Emanuel. I love it. Thank you, Jonas. <laughs> yep, thanks, guys. Here you go. Bison trivia from one Kyle Emanuel. We'll take our final break. We'll come back and wrap up the show next year for you on a Thursday. You've got the insiders on your Bison Nation station. Bison 1660. Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home proudly supports the Bison and appreciates the commitment each student makes to its success. Whether in the arts or other campus activities, these students are our country's future and deserving of our support. Hanson Runsvold is dedicated to helping families look to the future with hope and remember what we do today shapes our memories for tomorrow. Add the Bison experience and live life to the fullest. Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home, an experienced and caring staff with a distinct attention to detail. Doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, you're always welcome where there's Jim Beam. Small town guy in a big city, big city guy in a small town, wherever Jim Beam is welcome, you'll be welcome. 
Country guy at a rock show. Viking fan at a Packer game. Just look for the Jim Beam, and you know you're always welcome. Your friends at Jim Beam remind you to drink responsibly. We all want to be part of a winning team, right? Hi, this is Marcus with Steamatic, and I am very proud of our team. Industry experts have voted Steamatic the best method of cleaning with our patented steam cleaning process, our 24-hour service, and highly trained technicians. We do it all from carpet cleaning, air duct cleaning, fire and water damage restoration, and remember, buys and fanatics choose Steamatic. Steamatic, call 232-4707. If you're in the market for a new or used truck or SUV, check out Muscatel Burns Ford in Holly. They're the only Area Ford dealership to be awarded Ford's Elite 2021 President's Award for first-rate service. Muscatels is known for their low prices, good selection, and exceptional service. So the next time you're cruising around, stop in. Muscatel Burns Ford, just 20 minutes from Moorhead on Highway 10 in Holly. Hey, get your next Ford from Ward. We're with Chris Hoffman from Bonanza Agronomy. Chris, today's farmer does more than just grow crops. Farmers also have to make payroll. Farmers also have to market crop. Farmers also have to run equipment. And oh yeah, they have families too. The farmer has to wear many hats. So if he can take part of his operation and relinquish some control, remove the emotion from it, partner with an expert like Bonanza Agronomy, and let's put a plan together with somebody that's already been through this. Find them on Facebook and BonanzaAg.com. Your new career is waiting for you at the Hired Job Fair. Hired is presented by Northern Pipe Products and Titan Machinery in conjunction with Job Service North Dakota. At Hired, you'll meet employers from a wide variety of industries who are all looking for employees now. Hired is Tuesday, August 23rd from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Delta Hotel. Bring your resume and come dress to impress. It's the Hired Job Fair presented by Northern Pipe Products and Titan Machinery in conjunction with Job Service North Dakota, August 23rd from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Delta Hotel. If you need any professional advice, they may not be your guys. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. But if you need information on NDSU, then they got you covered. It's the Insiders on Bison 1660. Final segment on the show today. Big thanks to uh, the doctors from Vance Thompson Vision for stopping by. I always appreciate them coming on in once a month. I have a few more of those client interviews once we get into football season here. Oh, so many things going on. It's email central this time of year. So many different giveaways. We already said we got Call Your Shot coming back. Got a Friday football tailgate giveaway we'll be doing during the football season. The great friends are at Bud Light. It's just a ton of stuff we're going to be doing this year, so make sure you're tuned on in. Follow our uh, our Facebook account, Bison 1660 on Facebook. Make sure you're uh, up to up to date on the latest things we are doing because we got a bunch of giveaways for football season. And kind of started to announce it a little bit, but officially starting on Monday, this upcoming Monday, next week, we'll uh, start our Bison 1660 road tour. The road tour coming back presented by The Bridges Apartments. And uh, we got some great Bison swag, different apparel we're giving away from CI Sports. So going to be stops all over the place here in uh, Fargo, West Fargo area as we uh, lead up into the season and even going into the season throughout the month of September. So make sure you go to our website, bison1660.com. Again, on Monday is when you'll see it up there for the first time. But uh, go there on Monday to find out all of our stops, where we will be on what days. We'll have the insiders live for you to come out and watch and listen and a chance to win a whole bunch of stuff. Tickets, swag, different prizes will be given away every week on the Bison 1660 Road Tour. Again, this hour of the Insiders brought to you by Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home, proudly supporting the Bison. And uh, Hanson Runsvold is dedicated to helping families look to the future with hope. And remember, what you do today shapes your memories for tomorrow. Live life to the fullest and enjoy the Bison experience. Go Bison from Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home. Thank you for uh, trivia, Kyle. Well done. That was fun. That was I fun. had a great time. I think we do it again. I think we should. I can I always we'll come up with more Bison questions. Yeah. I already was coming up with one in the break there. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't give it away now. No, I won't. Keep it. Uh, keep yourself. it, keep it locked go. up. Yep. I get Coach Priz to call in one of these days then. I know. Do the Bison trivia with us. Watch, he probably wasn't even listening. Probably today. wasn't. I'm going to have to give him You're a hard tell time. tell him you did it, and he's like, I don't believe you. Yeah. No. I'll, I'll show. We'll, we got it podcasted, right, or something. We'll, oh, it's up there. He'll, he'll, will be, able, be. he'll be able to listen back. There we go. We also have, uh, what was the thing Kyle said early on that we podcast? Oh, the Let's Ride thing. Oh. 
We've got that too. Oh, I clipped that. I saw you clipped that. I, that will be ready for tomorrow. No doubt about it. Is that going to be like the need C think pro C type? Yeah, the thing new a new thing on the be... button bar. Okay, let's oh, ride. That's fine. And you did add something to it. So I did. You did add a little something. Uh, coach Entz joins us tomorrow. Looking forward to having the head coach on uh, tomorrow. Also, you hear from some of the people I told you I was going to hear. You're going to hear from today, but we're going to push it to tomorrow. Spencer Wagey will be uh, my conversation with him, and also offensive line coach Dan Larson will play those conversations for you tomorrow on the show. Come back again. We got one more day of the week before the weekend, and we get one week and closer to Bison football tomorrow, eleven to one. I'm Emily. I had my LASIK surgery here at Vance Thompson Vision. Being in the healthcare field, the highest technology is huge for patients. For me, that was the leading choice in why I chose to go with Vance Thompson Vision. Life without glasses in the operating room is it has been incredible for me. There's no more fogging. There's no more having issues with my glasses sliding down on my face. It's just been, it's been great for me. Call 877-522-EYES to schedule a free consultation. If you went to Eastern Montana, would you find family memories? Would you spend days exploring the dinosaur trail? Roar! Would you uncover a fossilized tooth in the earth? <gasps> Would you saddle up and explore state parks by horseback? Would you learn about native traditions? Would you be forever changed? Go find out. Discover miles of inspiration at visitmt.com slash eastern Montana. Finally, beautiful weather is here, and so is a summer of fun. That means more time in your car. Make sure your vehicle is running at one of the three locally owned Jiffy Lubes of Fargo. Oil changes are the number one maintenance item that's neglected. At Jiffy Lube of Fargo, it's easy. No appointment needed. Just drive up and drive in for your signature service oil change. Plus a check on the priority items to make sure your vehicle is working hard and can get you everywhere you want to go this summer. Jiffy Lube of Fargo has proudly served the Fargo-Moorhead Metro for over five decades. Jiffy Lube of Fargo, where you can do more in a Jiffy. Stop in today at Bernie's and shop their great selection of wine, beer, and liquor. From local brews and ready-to-drink cocktails to unique wines and worldwide brands, they're sure to have exactly what you're looking for. Find them on social at Bernie's Wines and Liquors or online at Bernie'sFargo.com. Bernie's Wines and Liquors, serving the FM area for over 50 years. Located Midtown on South University Drive in Fargo.